What you're about to listen to is part of the Podgods Network. If you go to podgodsnetwork.com, you'll find other great shows there too. If you have a problem with this or any other show, please write it in an email and go fuck yourself. Have a nice day. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. But more of the R-rated film that most other people do. There's some salty language in it and shit like that. We work very well together, okay? We're gruesome, do some, gruesome, do some. Pardon my French, but you're an asshole. These guys are eleven. I'm here for the gangbang. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. Inconceivable. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you! I double dare you, motherfucker! Say what one more goddamn time! They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works. Every time. That doesn't make sense. Is that no substitute? Hey enthusiasts, what's good? This is Salty Language episode 181. The sexiest podcast on the network, dare I say, the galaxy. Ooh, the galaxy. Wow. I, I'm, I'm the enthusiast that we did with uh, uh, Daft Pod. Neil proclaimed us the sexiest podcast on the planet, I think, didn't he? Or did well, he's... I'm expanding a All reign right. of terror <laughs> and, and swag and swagger and suave and... You should probably, Whatever other things. We really don't have most of that stuff, though. I mean, suave may be like shampoo or something, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we got we to gotta walk the... or ugh. Walk the walk, talk the talk. Yeah, thank you. Or I'm talk glad the someone's walk. braining. Uh, you know, hold on, let me have some more beer in my health. There you go. <laughs> that's That's been man's solution to bad uh, braining for years. I know. It's, I call it mind juice. Yeah, it certainly... <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. Yeah. I'm having flashbacks. Should be actually when I once I start brewing beer, that'll be my first brew. Mind juice. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds like one of those beers that's got to have some weird element to it or something. Like you know, it's, ma- it's made of actual brain. Yes, yes, <laughs> <A> brain, <laughs> brain fluid. <laughs> yes, nice. Now we're talking. <laughs> or you know, it's from like you just perform spinal taps on people. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Spinal tap right into the old uh, carabiner or whatever the hell they call those things. You get your brew going in. Yeah. I don't know. I'm no expert yet. I, yeah. I, I don't even know what the hell's going on anymore. Exactly. I'm talking about home brewing and home brew. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you know, I have a coworker of mine. Yeah. And now I want to just do like an ultimate word clothesline every time I see her. That's fair. <laughs> because. She's one of those types that watches a ton of shitty now, reality I, television. Real quick, I will say, if you're going to Ultimate Warrior Clothesliner, I'm going to need you to have to put the face paint on. Dude, I would rock the face okay. paint. Okay, and I don't mean like the bullshit toward the end like where you just put the little cute mask on his cheek. I mean, no, like, I'm talking full, full on. It would be, it'd be on my chest, too. I, <laughs> nice. like, Russell, like it was WrestleMania. <laughs> you come out, you got his like duster on, and <laughs> with the one that's got the art of him on the back of it, and... Which is all, phenomenal all, art. All people see me is they'd be like, why is Tony hyperventilating at, <laughs> hyperventilating at the time clock? And I'd clock in and I'd run full bore into the other building. Right. You're like, nonstop. Afterwards, they deliver the clothesline. Afterwards, you're like clutching your chest, falling to the ground. They're like, oh, I get it, Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> oh, heart attack joke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, because she I need you to get a wig, too, because you got to have that full blown out hair to really do well, it right. It's going to be bearded, Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I can live with that. Okay. <laughs> bearded ultimate yeah. you gotta have, have a, like blonde highlights in it yeah, so it's a blind hot, blonde you gotta highlights. blow it out too you know so well, it's just like all I have to do is wake up <laughs> that way it just drifts. you should see that shit before I put beard balm in it <laughs> it's out of control <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a Fabio commercial but it's attached to your face instead of your head <laughs> basically <laughs> alright fair enough anyway so you want to close on but, this broad but no um, yeah because 
she watches reality television shows. They're not like good ones, not that there are many. Right. But like Moonshiners. Ah, oh, jeez. Right? Yeah, the only, like, there's hey. only one reason to really watch Moonshiners is that in hopes that this still blows up on them. Yeah, that would be awesome. I would watch it. If, it. if there was, like, in this episode, these dumbass <laughs> barefoot fox get blown up, I'd be in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Blowed up. Blowed up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but um, so apparently cool. there's a guy on the show she watches named Tickle. <laughs> okay. Right. That's got, like, a big beard and he braids it. Yeah. Was so he- she's asking me, like, oh, when you get, are you going to braid your beard, like, tickle? And, of course, I'm looking at her like she's, you know, like, just descended from the moon. Like, if I braid my beard, it's going to be like, language. yeah, it's like, if I braid my beard, it's going to be like a Viking or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Then stroll around with a war axe. You know, look. And a skull <laughs> well, full of mead. As is tradition. <laughs> you can have it, like, double braided like you're uh, a barbarian or something, or a dwarf or something, you know. Yeah, that'd be most most excellent. Like yeah. I was auditioning for the Hobbit. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you're way too tall to be a dwarf. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh. My mom says I can be anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now every time I walk by, she calls me tickle. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like a sexual harassment thing, right? I know. Maybe I HR know. should get involved. And, well, and it's although it's they won't believe cause... you, you'll lose every time. They'll be like, "Nah, oh, yeah. we've heard your show." Yeah. <laughs> right. And, you know, it, it's kind of funny because in the back of my head, I just think about this show, you know, uh-huh. of like, oh, Uncle Creep. I was like, Uncle Tickle would have <laughs> been a good name. <laughs> I, that's a really good name, actually. <laughs> I know. I know. Right. I think we should find yeah. probably look to see if Uncle Tickle exists. And if it doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Uncle Tickle is the new name of that character. But yeah, basically because I can't think of I... anything creepier than someone coming up, putting their hand in the middle of your back, giving you that that little rub around. You know, like, <laughs> right. like, oh, tell Uncle Tickle all about it. <laughs> like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you start stabbing yourself. <laughs> I should actually look this guy up. Not a, I have the Uncle Tickle or me. just Tickle? Huh? Uncle Tickle or <laughs> or Tickle? Just un- tickle, tickle moonshiners. Uncle Tickle seems like something straight out of a horror movie. <laughs> okay, she's officially retarded because I just googled tickle and this guy does not have a beard at all. Okay. Yeah. Well, did he shave it? Maybe. I'm sc- I'm scroll scroll scrolling. Uh-huh. I see no beard. All right, fair enough. It's probably someone else. She's just getting him confused. Either way, well, there's, a, there's a strong chance for that. Either way, uh, Uncle Tickle is. Probably going to be the name of this show. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Well>, that's fair. <laughs> you know when I when I write down names of shows and stuff, I always try to keep in mind, like as people find our show, because you know a lot of shows will do the keyword thing where you know you put certain words in the title because it helps. Um, you know when someone types in like on Google, if they type in salty language uncle tickle then this would come up you know right <laughs> but yeah, a lot of our sure. titles probably are not going to get hits via google you know what i mean what like do you we don't mean, put, Brian? you know our titles are so attractive to the common yeah. audience <laughs> like we don't do a subtitle or something the word be like salty language you know blah 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 dc comics or you know whatever and i just i should probably change that but it's just not going to happen it's tradition yeah, it's now a- it's not really our style. No, nah, it's. I mean, we've got 180 plus episodes now of those kind of titles, so it's just, it's just got to stay. Plus, I mean, who doesn't want to find out about Uncle Tickle? Oh Jesus, you're right. And if you know anything about the show, <laughs> every niece and nephew. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone at the family reunion. <laughs> well, no, they all know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, stay away from Uncle Tickle. <laughs> Aw, but he's Uncle Tickle. Oh, man. See, it just leads itself into other things like Tickle the Clown and, you know, just... Oh, geez. <laughs> or Uncle Tickle the Clown, whatever. Uncle, it's just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Side gig. I'm actually picturing... um Oh, was it Captain Spaulding from... Um... <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm yeah. kind of picturing know, yeah. a little bit of him and a little... Yeah. Oh, and man. a little bit of Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> well, sure. With that mustache? Hell yeah. Well, no, because Spaulding has a beard. Be a perfect combo. You're right. Ooh. Noise. Noise. Anyway, enough of Tickle. I don't even know how we got on this subject. I think we're going to be revisiting, revisiting Tickle throughout the show. 
Now, oh, probably, yeah, I'm sure you're right. If we need someone to play Uncle Tickle, we can just go to the go to Hobo Gulch, and I'm sure there's a plethora of guys that could be Uncle Tickle there. You're probably right. And all we've got to do probably is give him a you know a bag of spray paint, and you know, <laughs> ah, huffers, and they're in. <laughs> Look for the guy that has mustache full silver paint. <laughs> I actually, I'm thinking now that I kind of want Uncle Uncle Tickle to have like a luxurious mullet that just blows in the wind like he's Joe Dirt. You know, he's driving his Trans Am or, you know. Right. Like, uh, <laughs> or a Camaro because he's got Camaro hair. Like like what's his name <laughs> from fucking uh, King of Kong. Um, oh, God, yeah. The hot sauce guy. God, yeah. I can't remember his I can't name think now. of his name either. You're right. <laughs> Oh, well, it's not that funny if you don't have a good reference, we'll so just, fuck it. We'll just Everyone him, just listen to it. Forget about it. We'll just call him Uncle Tickle. <laughs> Uncle Tickle. Uncle Tickle the hot sauce guy. Yeah, I don't want a hot sauce from Uncle Tickle. No, you certainly don't. It's it's all fresh squoze, but still. Yeah. You know. <laughs> du- du- doubles his lube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I think, I think your Chipotle lube <laughs> is a terrible idea, Uncle Tickle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Uh. Well, now that we've sufficiently or sufficiently, wow, sufficiently what? Who am I, Dan Lawler, making up words here? Um, sufficiently <laughs> covered Uncle Tickle for the moment. Temporarily, got a little hobo talk in there because we haven't talked about hobos in a couple episodes, and as is tradition. Yeah, well, I gotta, I gotta keep the brand out there. You know, it's true. <clears throat> You well, you gotta keep it hot in the fire to brand those hopes. That's right. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the thriving Hobo Gulch. <laughs> you betcha. The nation's number one family destination. How great would that be? And Hobo Emporium. Don't forget to visit the gift shop. You know, we're so much on the edge of starting to rant about hobos. <laughs> I know. I know. I can just feel it's it. Close. I know. Because I was just picturing some overweight southern guy in overalls like you know wrestling it like like those gator farms so he's pretty much hillbilly jim yes <laughs> but he's like sitting on a on a hobo's back and holding his head up <laughs> right he's a he's a hobo wrestler yeah hobo wrangler wrestling. whatever you know pinching its mouth shut <laughs> <laughs> yeah because the hobos go around like they're the berserker you know well they're bitey <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making old ass wrestling references. I hope anyone gets them. I got them. That's all, all right. matters. You remember the Berserker, right? When he would go around. With oh the, yeah. Hop, hop, like <laughs> weirdest fucking dude. All right, all right. Well, let's so, get to uh, how the week was, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, why not? Right. You know, I have a story actually to go off the like since we're already talking about reality shows. All right. And this has nothing to do with hobos, except for my idea that I put on Twitter the other day about you know the Bachelor and with hobos called the Ho Bachelor. But wow, I missed that. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, because I think it would be funny to take a hobo, clean him up real nice, and then do the same show as The Bachelor, right? Like, to where all these stupid bitches just are, you know, throwing themselves at this hobo, and then you know, it's and I don't mean like the Joe Millionaire thing where at the end you're like, tee, he's not really a millionaire. It's you just straight out from the beginning let them know this guy's homeless, jobless, whatever, and just but he's like the nicest guy and. Now let's truly All see right. how legitimate these women are looking for love. I, I, I like or, this idea. Or the other idea is put me in that show, same thing. I kind of feel like you need to have like hot, upper crusty, or gold digging the women's. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And then a, a whole gaggle of hobos. Okay. So you have like your regular ones, your crazy ones. <laughs> are you talking about your the ones w- that have like a foot rotting off? Now are we talking about the women now or the hobos? The hobos. Okay, because that could have applied either way. The women got to be like you know nines, tens, just because okay, it's hilarious. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, because I just I just want to help hobos find some love. That's all. That's true. I mean, you know, I'm not made of stone. Exactly. That I'll guy's see. toe looks like it is, though. <laughs> Yeesh. Uh, I just want one of these shows to, like, just... Again, I know, like, that was the point of Joe Millionaire, was to show how just money-grubbing these idiots are on the TV shows, but... Right. Like I said, every time they show, like, a new thing for The Bachelor, it's just... Like, this year, they're like, we're bringing this guy back. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this guy looks like he could step into Hollywood and play one of the Avengers. You know? 
because he's a pretty, pretty man. And I'm like, why don't they ever have some fat slob like me on there? And then let's see how how much these women want to throw themselves at me to be the you know the to get the ring. The Bachelor. Yeah, because I guarantee it's going to be a whole different show. <laughs> 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 like those women are going to show up, and you know I'm going to greet them. They're going to think I'm just like the chauffeur. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why is there a cameraman on stage? <laughs> yeah. Are you a gaffer? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to be like. Pointing equipment at things. Oh, I am, baby. I am. <laughs> <laughs> <Ugh. laughs> oh man, no, no, baby, talk into the boom mic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't understand, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Like seriously, like we've gotten close a couple of times. Like I forgot. Uh, what was it? There was actually a show that Ashton Kutcher, I believe, was a producer on that was – the point of it was to put, like, geeks with, um, like, model-level women and, you know, just watch the I awkwardness I remember, ensue. I think I remember seeing commercials, right? The Shit. initial idea was great because it was going right. to make the geeks stupid awkward and it was going to, you know, like, show how awkward the girls were when you put them in, you know – a non-modeling environment, basically, and it, whatever, you know, and it, at the end, they were all supposed to be nice and friendly and whatever. But then, it, reality TV gets in the way and, you know, whatever. Yeah, oh, we got to make this more dramatic than it is. Right. See, with me, you wouldn't have to worry about that because I just make it dramatic from the beginning because, you know, I'm I'm detached, I'm indifferent, <laughs> you know, as the women are trying <laughs> to get close to me, I'd be pushing them away because of my depression, you know. <laughs> By the way, Neil, calm down. Um, I'm talking about depression and stuff. I don't want him getting all fired up, as you hear if you listen to The Enthusiasts, episode three, <sighs> with those dark angels and pretty freaks, idiots. <laughs> that was Neil's Still idea. That's, that was his, I know. his idea. I know. Um, but yeah, I, I just think it would be much, I just want a real guy on one of those shows, or a real woman for that matter. And I don't mean by real, I don't mean like, real guy occurs, and I don't mean that bullshit. Mm. But it's like just an actual mm-hmm. person that isn't like, oh, this guy's a farmer, but he also looks like Chris Helmsworth, you know? <laughs> like, right. Uh-huh. Oh, you mean that hacker? Yeah. It's like, yeah, you know, I can really, like, I can feel for this guy. He's got to have such a hard time finding women when he looks like he should be a model. Oh, it's got to be difficult. I feel so bad for him. Wait, no. I, I, stop it. But what you don't know, bro. I feel like I'm going into a Florentine thing here. Like the bachelor. Ugh. What you don't know <laughs> is deep beneath his good looks is a micro penis. <laughs> that would that would be the ultimate reality show. <laughs> like he's rich as hell, looks great, but super micro yeah. penis. <laughs> like exactly. the tiniest penis known to man. Hung like a thumbtack. <laughs> yep. Although there's uh what's that? I think there's like a book or there was a TV like like a documentary or something about a guy who has a micro penis and he's got like a like nine or a 10 for a wife. And I'm like, well, clearly this is a guy. She's just like, Hey, I just need a guy who's good with his hands or whatever. I don't know. True. You know? So yeah. Anywho, that wasn't all of this was not the story I was getting to. Oh, all right. Excellent. The story I was getting to, because I don't want to go off on a rant here. We'll represent. (laughs) Yeah. Call back. Yeah. It's an old call back. All right. Uh, as I was eating dinner tonight, Undercover Boss was on the TV. Okay. And I have mixed feelings about that show. You know, some of the stuff's kind of cool that the owners and stuff do for the people that they meet on there. But, right. Yeah, whatever. And I'm always down for secret shopping because, you know, it is fun to catch people when they're doing their jobs, sh- you know, in a very shitty manner. As True. I've done some secret shopping. It was good times. Um, but... This guy that was on there today, he was, he's the owner of, uh, like, a chauffeur, or, yeah, a chauffeur, geez, a limousine company, you know. And, you know, so they were testing chauffeurs. Like, right. you know, they put them through a driving test, like a, a course. And, yeah. you know, they walk them through first, and they're like, okay, you know, the, hit a cone, it's negative five. You know, just like a normal driving test, whatever, I hear. Um, <laughs> so... The first guy they they have come up, his name's like Mr. Wong or something like that. 
<laughs> or Mr. Chu. I think it was Mr. Chu. Sorry. No. Oh. Sorry. We'll go with Mr. Wong because it makes for better jokes. It does. Anywho, so Mr. Mr. Wong just hits like everything. <laughs> And oh, I'm, geez. I'm standing that sounds there, like a stereotype. Right? I'm standing there going, did they really just have to show the Asian guy not being able to drive? Did they really have to do that? Couldn't they have found any other demographic, uh, aside from women and Asians, since stereotypes? Couldn't they have found, like, a white dude who has no idea how to drive, just crushing cones left and right? Wait, you ask him how many cones he has subtracted from ones he didn't, and he nails it. <laughs> No, no, there's your stereotype. <laughs> Ace is the math part of the test. Too bad there is no math part of the test. <laughs> wah, wah. Oh, sorry, you got that one wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that. <laughs> is that the knowledge wrong? It's the only Asian thing I had going on, uh, <laughs> besides the micro penis <laughs> reference. <laughs> I was just going to say it. Nice. Oh, oh shit! Yeah, there goes that. There goes that whole demographic for all listening yeah, audience yeah. again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just found it really funny that that was the only example of driving that they showed on this course right. <laughs> was the Asian guy not being able to drive, <laughs> doing it terribly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh man. That of was, course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so all right. So let's uh, you know. So uh, how was your week? Anything new and exciting? Uh, you know what I started watching on the old Netflix? Rewatching, rather. Uh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your post. I, yes. I feel like I cheated a little bit. <laughs> That's fine. I actually did that when I was laid up a year ago when I couldn't get out of bed because of my knee. Because right. I was living like the misery thing without the weird woman that was, you know, like hurting me. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. point. Yeah, I went through and binge watch Cheers and then Frasier. That's yeah, 20 I, years I, of television. <laughs> that is. Ugh. I forgot how funny that show was. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. As it goes on, it really drops, though. Like oh, when, does it? When Sam, and Di- or, yeah, when Sam and Diane really get into their like real love part of it, the show really kind of gets shit. Ah. Uh, but. Say, cause I'm, I'm like five or six episodes into season one. I'm like, this is oh, some no, funny it's, stuff. It's, it's great early on. Yeah. But once they kind of, like, it's like when they get together, it kind of just, because right. you take away what makes Sam Sam. You know, Sam's at his best when he's the, basically the Ric Flair of the show. Yeah, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, meh, whatever. But it's still a good yeah. watch. I don't. I mean, you know, shit, cheers. It's a lot, of, it's a lot to watch, though. Yeah, I don't even know how many episodes is in a season. It's, yeah, so it's I, enough. There's, like... There's 20-some episodes, I think, in most seasons, and there's 10 years. There you go. Yeah, or 10 or 11. I'll probably give up in a little bit, but for right now, yeah. it's just kind of nice to throw in the background. That's what I did originally was I watched, like, the first season, and then uh, it was a while, and then I went back, and I just started it again, and then I watched, like I said, I watched all of it, and then I picked up, I watched Frasier, the, well, the full run of Frasier right after that. Right. And I was like, oh, my God, I just watched essentially 20 years of Frasier Crane. <laughs> Seems like madness. Yeah. Then I watched The Space Simpsons. Space madness. Man, that's a great episode of Ren and Stimpy. That's a great episode. It's my ice cream bar. I don't know. <laughs> I've, been, yeah, uh, so. I've been jumping what? around in Netflix. I just watched uh, season two of Marin. Oh, which, right. I haven't watched any of that yet. Oh, really? It's it's a good show. It's it's a really, really good show. And Louie's up next. I'm going to start Louie tonight. Uh, the new seasons of Louie. What was it? Season three, I think, is where I'm at. Right. Because, <clears throat> you know, I fell behind. and I don't know how I fell behind, given that that's one of my favorite shows. I, I guess it's on the topic of TV. You know, you know what I am sick of hearing about? No. The Walking Dead. <laughs> oh, shit, man. Yeah. I know. I'm going to piss some people off, probably. You'll do that. Uh, I'm sick of that hearing about it. I'm sick of hearing about zombies in general. Yeah, I'll give you that. Honest. I I'll give you that. I I'm I'll still watch Walking Dead, but I'm really tired of zombies in general. Like in comics too. Like yeah. just every book I read that's got a zombie thing and I'm just like, ah, can't we do something else? It's just Jesus, we've seen it. We get it. The dead rise. Yeah. Okay, now what? Yeah. Yeah. Cause... Yeah, I'm getting I, and I, unfortunately I think my whole like fed up with the walking dead is directly due with just zombies being 
everywhere. That's yeah, probably true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because cause it really is. Like, there's been, what, three, counting that one, three or four TV shows on recently with it. There's actually about to be in, what, another one, I believe, based on a comic called I Zombie. And, uh,. Uh, let's see what else is there. And then there, obviously there's been a shit ton of movies and there's been like little variants on them and stuff to where it's like, they're not zombies, but they're like mindless whatever's because of a, uh, you know, some sort yeah. of, some sort of virus yeah. and they become crazy. Like, uh, 28 days later. Yeah. It's like, even if they're yeah. not truly zombies, they're truly zombies. I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm yeah. with you. I'm kind of tired of it. Like I said, I still like Walking Dead. It's a good show. I just don't... I'm with you. I'm just tired of zombies in general. Though. Yeah, I'm ready for a new gimmick. Yeah, the problem is... What this, that is, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's where the problem is, because zombies have made so much money. Yeah. You know, well, that, because, you know, you can it can be a television at whatever time, and yeah. no one has an issue if you shotgunning a zombie's head off. That's true, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But if it was you were shotgunning a, I don't know... Uh, Russian mobsters head off. Maybe that becomes more of a problem. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. It's it's pretty it's pretty annoying though. I it just I don't know. I I get it. I'm fine with it in a lot of ways, but at the same time I just I just wish that I you know, I think it's not even just zombies. I think it's I'm just tired of retread. That you know? could be too. And I, you know, I run into this with comics a lot of times and I think it's why a lot of people have uh, kind of moved away. It's why I think Image is doing as well as it is comics wise oh, right now. Because they're they're like, hey, this whole superhero thing. It's not really our yeah. Gig. Well, even when they do superhero stories like at Image and stuff, there's superheroes like Invincible, which is a a different kind of superhero book. Or right, you know, they they just don't. I don't know. It, it's just not the same over and over. And that's the way you know Avengers and X Men and a lot of that is felt over the years. It just feels like the same shit. It's just a retelling of the same shit, you know? Hey, guys, Magneto wants to separate the mutants and kill the humans. Yeah, didn't you already do that three Again? times? Yeah, it, you know, I don't know. I, I think kind of Axis kind of set me down that road because of, you know, the, what do you call it, the Red Onslaught or whatever, which felt right. like a freaking rehash of the ons, of Onslaught from years ago. and From years and years ago, And they're yeah. talking about doing the... Uh, the upcoming thing where they're going to time jump into back into events and stuff. And it's like, uh, like, I'm, you know, on one hand, it's like, cool, I'll read it. But on the other hand, I'm, I don't know. It's just like, then it's like, I'm over here now and I'm reading Saga or I'm reading Outcast or, you know, God Hates Astronauts or, you know what I mean? It's like I'm reading <laughs> right. something that's just totally out in left field or a little more out in left field. And it's like, this is why, or Birthright, it's like, this is why I keep going to this stuff because... Even if it is rehash, it's only been done like once or twice before. It doesn't right. feel like it's been done f- over know. and over and over. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yep. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I uh, I don't know. You got something else? I keep I keep like jumping in of shit. You got some? No, or it's I just jump in of more shit. Well, no, I just uh, I uh, you know I mentioned that I had that uh, kidney ultrasound. Was oh yeah yeah, yeah how'd that go? I haven't heard back from them. It's been That's weird. A full week, I haven't heard anything, and uh, you know, it's because they're they're completely bobbled. How there's a whole like you know bowling trophy in there or something. Probably, yeah. I I don't. It's so mind blowing to me the way that healthcare works in the U.S. In that, wait, did you say it works? <laughs> I certainly did. Whoa, even, even though I'm, even though I'm actually gonna. That's a bold statement. <laughs> even though I'm actually now gonna contradict that. Oh, um, okay, that's more like it. I just think it's amazing how it's like. Okay, I go in and I have this kidney ultrasound, right? Uh-huh. I, and I mean, I know what they're looking for. They're looking to see, you know, if I have more kidney stones. That's what they're looking for. Okay. Well, they don't call me back, and I know it's gotten to where essentially no news is good news when it comes to medicine. Like if they don't call right. you back, that generally means they didn't find anything that's concerning. The problem is that what led to me getting this ultrasound is I went into the doctor and I was like, I'm still having pain in uncomfortable whatnots in my nethers. Right. I need this taken care of because it really sucks. The doctor sends me for the ultrasound, and here I am. Now, I'm still having these issues. 
Now what? You know what I mean? Like, I have to initiate the next step. The doctor doesn't call back and go, okay, well, we didn't find anything. Are you still having these issues? If so, well, come back in. Because you're or just what? a number, sir. That's my point. Is it's like it, yeah. it, <clears throat> I was talking to a friend of mine in Canada that I've referenced on the show various times. Her name is at Fluffy Bunny Ash on Twitter, and we were talking. She lives in you know Canada where they have all the free health care and, and whatnot. Moose. And she's like, yeah, we pretty much know the results of an ultrasound like when we walk out. <laughs> and I'm like, really? They told me two days. Now, I had it on a Thursday, so I was like, well, it's going to be at least Monday before I hear right, anything. Right, because, you know, why work the weekend? Absolutely. And, you know, because in this day and age, you know, it's not like we have some way for information to be transmitted at a high rate of speed where you would know immediately or the next day. This is true. That's that, just, sounds, that, that sounds too futuristic. You're right. Really. That, that That's impossible. <laughs> it is impossible. <laughs> to quote Ralph Wiggum. Um, yes. I... It just because like she asked me again the other day if I'd heard anything and I was like no, she's like oh my god really and I was like yeah that's how it works here like they don't America. tell you yeah they don't tell you anything unless it's bad and I actually right. I called yesterday and and I was like yeah I haven't heard anything back and I think what they interpreted that as is that I wanted a copy of the results and it's like what I really wanted was to talk to the nurse so that they could talk to the doctor. And find, figure out whether do I need to come back in? Do they need to prescribe more antibiotics for me? What you know? Do I need to go see a urologist? Do I need a yeah. CT scan? <laughs> like, what the hell do I Give do? Give me some goddamn information. <laughs> it's like, listen, I can WebMD this, and I can start going. Well, the symptoms I have are really reminiscent of a, a UTI, so I guess I can get on cranberry juice. But I can prescribe myself antibiotics. So, <laughs> uh, if, just because it's delicious. If you're going to prescribe cranberry juice to yourself, you should put, like, a nice splash of Jaeger in it. Well, <laughs> it's not bad. It sounds weird, but it's not I, bad. I, I think that's counterproductive. No, with... shut up. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, I forgot you're a doctor. Yes, science! <laughs> right? <laughs> Good call. Good call. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. And I could rant longer on this, but whatever. <sighs> So that's the update for the week on the inept ah, U.S. healthcare system. <laughs> the the uh, Prego with rocks kidney update. You know what the funny part is? I, I honestly don't think I still have kidney stones working their way through like I thought I did. I right. really and truly think that there's a better chance that, long, that I also have a urinary tract infection. And when they gave me antibiotics, they only gave them to me for a few days. Normally when you have antibiotics, it's for like 10 days. Right. I got like three days or five days worth, you know, and I'm I'm just wondering if they didn't give me enough medicine to clear this out, and that's really the problem. I would definitely recommend the cranberry juice power hour. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm thinking is that. Except let's we'll scratch the cranberry juice. We'll just go with bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, funny you mentioned that. I read something the other day <clears throat> that said that Mountain Dew was originally created as a mixer for whiskey. Which really? makes sense because, you know, I mean, if do you remember Mountain Dew's original logo? It was like the most stereotypical, like, hick they could draw, basically. Right. It probably looked a lot like Tickle. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Not Uncle Tickle, though. No, no, no. Uncle Tickle's way creepier. Right. Uncle Tickle only has, like, three fingers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They keep cutting them off. You don't want to order fourth one thing. <laughs> You probably already know. <laughs> Let's just say that's normal swelling. You should be okay in a, with that before long. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway, so the other day I was like, you know, I have some Mountain Dew here. I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to pour a little whiskey in there because I, I just wanted some whiskey, honestly. And I was like, eh, what the hell, I'll try this. Whiskey's delicious in anything. It's not sure. great. It's not great in Mountain Dew, let me tell you, from my perspective. I, it, when you mention that, I'm like, wow, that sounds disgusting. Yeah. Like, I know, like, I've had Jameson's mixed in with various, uh, like, beverages, and it's been delicious in most of them. Right. Not that I'm saying I put pour Jameson into Mountain Dew. I certainly didn't. But it was still, like, yeah, I don't recommend it. <laughs> like, I drank yeah. it because I'm not wasting the whiskey. Yeah, Mountain Whiskey sounds horrible. <laughs> it also sounds like something I'm I'm uh, straining out. But <laughs> the Whiskey Dew, that sounds like a sweet name. Whiskey Dew. Whiskey Dew. <laughs> All right, y'all, Whiskey Dew's coming up on stage next. <laughs> I was thinking, like, sounds like a dance or something. Oh, uh, that could be, too. Yeah. 
The whiskey do. Or it sounds like the whiskey do. <laughs> no, the whiskey do is the brothel <laughs> in the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Cletus, let's head on up to the whiskey do. <laughs> <laughs> let's whiskey don't I got me one of them infections last time <laughs> I told you pour some bourbon on it oh so, man I, I, I do have a question for and I fully expect answers <laughs> <laughs> from me or other people other people oh okay Not for, specifically from the ladies good I can take the this the ladies off. assault your language yeah so um, either hit us up on the Twitters at salty underscore the language, not the language, just language. Or, uh, you know, or on my direct voicemail, line. 4 and 5, 8, 5, 7, 25, 89, or on Facebook, whatever. Or if you're really saw, hot, my direct line, it, no. <laughs> um, I saw this woman, right? And I have to ask, because I, first I saw her from the back, because she had like middle, her hair was long. Mm-hmm. And like like past her shoulders, middle of the back long. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And she has some sort of weird like top knot thing going on. Like she should be, you know Chris Jericho. Defending her feudal lord. Oh, okay. Or Chris Jericho. <laughs> or Gene Simmons or something, right? <laughs> but she turned around, right? Right now? Yeah. And it was straight eyes. up George Costanza hairline. <laughs> Wait, on a woman? Yeah. Like how far back? Like past the middle of her head. Oh, like now shaved or just legit bald? If she shaved it, she's mental. <laughs> well, there's that. I I think it was just bald. Now I have to ask another question. And I, sure, it was a I've, woman. Guys can have tits too. Guys can huh? have tits and camel toes. Too. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, ninety-one percent sure. <laughs> all right. <laughs> See the but, way to hold on. The way to find out is just go up and be like, "Excuse me, can you tell me? Do you like my voice?" If if they say yes, ninety nine percent it's a guy. True. So, or I just yell "sir" and see what happens <laughs> until they turn around. But, but I gotta know now that I mean that's full commitment to whatever hair is still like clinging on to your life. I mean. I, I guess it's similar to like, you know, like, do you remember when Jerry Rice had his hair like in the cornrows or because yeah. I hate to keep going to Stevie Wonder because, again, everyone's going to oh, always blind. But them, that dude's been rocking them cornrows as, you know, they've been harvested, you know, yeah. back, further <laughs> exactly. and further back, you know, and Jerry Rice was doing that, too. And people were like, man, it's time to get rid of that. Like, you got to own it at some point. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sitting here in bad need of a haircut myself. But I, you know. <laughs> you just I, and when you're a woman, I don't. I just you just cut it and get a wig at that point, right? Yeah, well, that's what I would think. I mean, if that's you, what I that's what I want to know. Or you just like, rock a cool comb over and you know call them bangs. That's not cool at all. Well, says you. That, that that's what I want to know is you know to the, the ladies assaulted language. I think it is would if help if there was a picture, you know, because then we could. Dude, I was in such shock. <laughs> <laughs> By shock, he means horniness. I He's mean, I, I don't furiously know furiously how... fapping. Well, yeah, I mean, I was in the bushes after all. <laughs> yeah, you were. Crashed there I, awkwardly, I, right? It's ladies. like I, I fully give full credit to the guy who filmed that creepy Bigfoot video, you know? Because <laughs> right. I, I couldn't even get my camera up. <laughs> <laughs> I was so in shock. That sounds like a problem. But, uh, yeah, I just if, if you're faced with woman pattern baldness <laughs> I don't think it's female called female pattern baldness. I don't think it's called like female you. pattern baldness because the pattern in men is that you're a man and you bald. And women, it's not typical. So I, well, I don't whatever. think it works the same. All right. All right. If Jesus hates you. <laughs> <laughs> it is so. It's, it is really, like, worse for women to lose their hair than guys, though. Because what's, what's, what's what is a little top knot even drew more attention to it, well, right? Well, yeah. What, where are you pulling that hair from, though? The sides and back? It, dude, I'm telling you, the rest of the hair was super long. That, that, that's what I'm like. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, where are you pulling the top knot from? You're just pulling it was It was from... just there. It was like, you know, whatever hair she could manage to. So it's like Gene Simmons, then? Ki- yeah, kind of. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, because his hair is really, I don't know what the hell's going on on top. It looks like cotton candy, but. <laughs> yeah, he, he looks like, like a, an old lion. Yeah. You know? It, wow. I don't yeah, know. I just need to know, like, if you're faced with that, what do you, I mean, I, I, 
My feeling would be yeah. you take it all the way or, or way down and you just start yeah, rocking wigs. She's not get a wig or just or just boom, rock the bald. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Although, to be fair, if this woman would rock the bald, then she would have looked like, you know, like Fester fought a robot. I was going to say Bam Bam, but all right. Ooh, <laughs> By Bam boy. Bam, I mean Bigelow, not... Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just not, clarifying. Not, not like the Flintstones boy. Right. Just in case for you listeners, if you ever wonder, is he talking about a cartoon or is he talking about old wrestling? Always, always, always pick wrestling because 99% of the time, that's what I mean. Wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, even though I love me some cartoons, it's generally going to be old wrestling. <laughs> yeah. I was just, I don't know. So hopefully some answers come through because I was just shocked. <sighs> yeah. Because I mean, I like say I, I, I did the thing where I was like, I'm going to shave my head, but will I have hair? And like we covered before, I decided Chernobyl. I'm going to grow my hair back, and my <laughs> hair wasn't cooperating. Right. Yeah. So I couldn't imagine, you know, having half a head of hair. I like and being me, like, I got this shit. <laughs> you like know? right now, the way my hair is, like again, I'm in bad need of you know taking it down again. But uh, I I can't imagine at this point, like, trying to grow my hair back out. Because I know it's going to look horrible. You know what I mean? Right. Like, at some point, I mean, don't get me wrong. We've seen, I mean, Tate told us stories about, remember when she said she got her hair cut to, like, her shoulders and she's, like, she sobbed about it? Because, right. and she didn't have hair, like, as long as it is now, which is, like, almost waist long or something. But <laughs> it's, you know. and well, there's not that long. She's little. Right. There's a lot of people that are that way, though, that are real emotional about, you know, cutting their hair and stuff. So I could see, you know, the woman, especially if she has hair that long, I could see yeah. her not wanting to take it all yeah, down. But, but but then there's the whole thing of, oh, look, there's a needle I'm looking into. <laughs> and, and and look at all that real estate up there. I know, right? When you're like, wow, I have like a 12 head, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's, yeah, exactly. I understand. It's like when you're, you know... When you look at like satellite photos where they're just logging, there's all that forest. <laughs> well, that's pretty, just like bare ground. That's pretty much what's going on on top of my head. It's like they skipped a few trees, and <laughs> you know, like there's a little a coverage trees, here like, and there, like owls and shit. <laughs> yeah, right, too, exactly. You know? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I I would like to hear some ladies' feedback on this because we're both guys, and listen, it was hard enough for you know, as my hair decided it no longer wanted to uh, live on top of my head. You know, it was not an easy thing, and it still isn't, but I, I you know, just, I've at least gra- grabbed that razor. No, no, blade. no. That's what I'm saying is I, it's like, I get it now, you know, like yeah. I understand it's like, whatever it's, it's whatever. I can't do anything about it. You know, there's fucking like, accept it. Embrace well, it. Well, That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> Go to war with it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying here. You know, but man, if I had long, luxurious locks and all of a sudden it, I started losing them, man, I, I, I'd be like sobbing my head off. So I don't know. But I sure as hell wouldn't be rocking like you know, <laughs> the top top knot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I mean, unless you're wearing Buddhist monk robes, yeah. the top knot's just a bad look in general, right? So I I don't know. This will be an interesting one because I'm very yeah. curious myself. Well, hopefully, we get some people chiming in. I don't know. Yeah. Oh man, speaking of heads, though, I wrecked my head on the medicine cabinet door the other day. You know, I talked on the enthusiast with uh, Neil and Annalise about how I have a lot of head trauma. <laughs> and, yes. And, yep, I just added to it, dude. I caught the corner right on top of my head. I had, I didn't realize the door wasn't shut all the way, and it started coming back open, and I had bent down. It's because it was the gravity of your it, skull. Well, <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> and as I went to stand back up, dude, just crushed my head on the thing, right in the corner of it, too, you know? Oh, of course. Why and, not? The, the Right in the sweet spot. I'll tell you, like, I expected to look in the mirror and just look like Ric Flair after, you know, a match, you know, wearing the crimson mask and stuff. But it's true. I didn't. I Somehow the top of my head didn't split open. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. So uh, I, it's because it's it's accustomed to taking these it blows. Is. It's from all the blading I did over the years, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, when, I don't when you're when you're out in the uh, the rolling hills battling other Brian's right. for for beating right. Right. <laughs> like I don't I don't cut on my arms when I get depressed. I I blade my head like I'm a wrestler, you know. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> and then I just walk up to women because you know they they immediately have sympathy for me. Like, oh, you poor thing. <laughs> 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 I uh, see my mating display is worse. <laughs> naturally, naturally. <laughs> oh shit. Um, um yeah. I, I also who what? No, go ahead. Again. So th- this uh this happened to me today, right? 
Mm-hmm. I'm getting, I'm filling up my, my office, filling it full of delicious unleaded fuel. <laughs> right. Right. Mm-hmm. And when I'm, if, you know, I got, I have work, a gas card for work. So I just swipe and I don't, I don't give a fuck what the price is. Yeah. I, I just fill it up. Right. It's not your care. problem. Sure. Exactly. It doesn't come out of my paycheck. I don't give a shit. So, but I always, I, I always look at the price as a curiosity. Yeah. And I, I looked at it. I'm like, wow, it's more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Gas must be going up, right? Yeah. Until I looked at the the gas pump. And the way it was laid out, it had three blocks of color. Right. Red, orange, green. Right. Right. Which usually means lowest unleaded to highest. Yeah. Yeah. So I hit the uh, green, right? Uh-huh. Which was mid grade. <laughs> the lowest uh, octane was orange in the middle of the pump. Oh, that's oh, that's deceiving. I know, and and I saw that, and I I just went, "You sneaky gas station fox!" Which got some looks from people. Around me. <laughs> right. You know what that I reminds you of? It. Like recently, well, by recently I mean the last year. Google has changed it. I don't know if you noticed on their homepage. Or, like, when you just Google something, like, toward the top, you know, where it says, like, videos, images, whatever. Images, yeah. it used to say, like, web, images, videos, I think. Now, a lot of times, that second one is, like, shopping, or they've, like, moved the, they move them around at times. So it's not the same thing every time. So you so just mindlessly. mindlessly click. Exactly. Right. And that's exactly what's going on here is that most people know to the left is the cheapest, to the right's the most expensive, or diesel, or the right. whatever. So you always, and, you know. And I, I was going by color. Right. And and it was to the one to the far right, too. So I'm like, oh, it's got to be. Yeah. Now, granted, it's my fault because I didn't look. Yeah. I didn't read. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, wow, I wonder how many other people they got with this. Oh, a bunch, I bet. Because, like I said, most people are probably doing the same thing because they're accustomed yeah. to whatever. That seems like some sneaky Pete kind of bullshit That's exactly right there. Why I was yeah. like, you sneaky gas station fucks. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's man. Oh, you so shady. Yeah. <sighs> that is some super sa- super shady <laughs> super shady shit right there. Super shady. Super shady shit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I just wanted to get some alliteration into the show. Get some crevassier. <laughs> <laughs> some crevassier. <laughs> 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 Oh, man. See, when you do so, that, guess where my head goes when you start doing a lisp and you start talking? What's that? I go into, you know, that old son of a plumber, Dusty Rhodes, oh, talking nice, about sweet, sweet nice. sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you one, ever... I got one silver dollar. <laughs> if you ever want to hear a great Dusty Rhodes impression, Dean Ambrose, who's a current wrestler, does an amazing right. uh, Dusty Rhodes impression. They were doing it on uh, one of the episodes. I don't remember if it was Raw or SmackDown or some video thing that was on the network. And uh, me and Show were just rolling it, every time they showed him and he did the Dusty Rhodes impression because it's so perfect. But does he do an amazing bionic elbow? Uh, you know what? He'd probably do an all right bionic elbow. All I mean, right, he's then. not going to be able to put Dusty Rhodes' immense girth into it because, you well. Know, I mean, true. Once yeah. you get that gut going, all the yeah. momentum comes with it. Right. So, also, by the way, I'm thinking Dusty Rhodes for Halloween. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, perfect. I'm just going to go around go. talking with a lisp slash slur because I'll be drunk. And All right. I like this idea, but you got to do one thing. Bionic elbow? you got to convince show uh-huh. to be Sapphire. <laughs> How about T? <laughs> T's going to be like Coco Beware or something. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, he's not. He wouldn't be minority for me, so I don't know. They yeah, say you know when when I was talking about doing Macho Man, you know. I know I'm still disappointed, he, and he wouldn't be minority though. Well, I think he said he would if someone made the costume yeah, for him. I know, but but I also in the back of his head, I think he was like, I don't want these white people to light me on fire. That's probably true. Yeah, that's probably smart on his part because we're, I, we're I, just I, dumb enough to try. Yeah, no exactly. racism in it. Just no, like drunk enough to go you know it'd be say, a good idea pure booze <laughs> yeah you know it'd be a great idea uh like look he looks like michael jackson in a pepsi commercial <laughs> <laughs> or richard Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all i can that picture is uncanny <laughs> all i can picture is the when he does the when he did the uh um, with the match the match yeah, yeah which hilarious. was someone else's joke but you know yeah he just you know owned it because <laughs> it was true Owned it. Owned it. Um, I've been 
this is one downside about being an independent podcaster and interacting with other independent podcasters. Yes. Is you listen to more podcasts. Yeah, and I've already got like a pile of like on my computer. I've actually transferred some shows to my computer and I still subscribe to them on there to get the episodes because I want to listen to all of the episodes. But basically I'm just hoarding podcasts. <laughs> right. There should be a new show, podcast order. Ooh. They just throw your computer away and you're fixed. <laughs> well, I'm getting close because the thing is trying to die. And luckily I had the foresight to get an external a while ago and throw everything important on it. And oh, that's fun. Yeah. The problem is that in the meantime, newer technology, like I got the computer I'm recording on right now and <clears throat> I have, uh, it's a FireWire connection. Well, the new computers have a newer FireWire connection <laughs> and... Yeah, I I gotta buy like an adapter or I don't know. Well, of something. course, because naturally, I seriously, there's no way for me to plug this thing into my new computer without some sort of an adapter. That's like, lovely. The new external I have is also FireWire, but it also came with a USB cable. Oh, see, see that's that at least convenient. makes sense. Yeah, because FireWire yeah. is a better. It has a higher. Um, you can like transfer, transfer rate or whatever. Yeah, so it's yeah. A, a better way to transfer. The problem is that it's you know, it's uh, you know a little more. I don't know. Most computers don't have a FireWire port, you know. Right. So, I mean, Max did, but I don't know if they still do. I don't think so. I think they moved to something else now. Like liquid hot magma wire. Yeah. 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 Ooh, oh my god. Magma wire, you say? Mm. Yeah. Well, I, so I started listening to a, a couple more podcasts. Yes. Well, I got some on my docket. I haven't quite listened to yet. I see. But I listen to uh, Snake Oil Comics. Ooh, right. And I I know they're on one of our <laughs> networks, Ron. <laughs> and I, I just can't keep that shit straight. So right. Sorry. Yeah. But uh, I, you know, they're fellow Michiganders. Yep. Which is cool. Out of Saginaw. Yep. And uh, they were like, "Oh, you need to listen to this episode, not the episode that's out currently." Well, fuck you. I listen to your current episode. <laughs> <laughs> I do what interview. I want. <laughs> exactly. I do my own shit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. I'll, I'll be tuning in for the future. Lies. He's just saying that. He's really not going to. So snakeoilcomics.com, I believe they said their website was. It's first time I listened, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> but there's <laughs> SOC podcasts on the Twitter. The Twitters. The Twitter machines. Right. right. Oh, ooh, and speaking of comic books and uh, podcasts, I don't know why I'm waving my hands around like Jeff Goldblum. I'm not sure either. <laughs> yeah. Um, comic book roast, right? Yeah. They're doing. Did you, have you listened to their newest episode? Yes. Okay, they they're doing some like thirty day comic book challenge. Yes, I am participating with them. Damn it! Now, are you participating on our very program, or are you participating like via Twitter to them? No, not on ours because that's their gig. Right, that's whatever. why I was asking. Right, yeah, but I I like you know punched in the nine days they did of and answered them under my notes and just screen capped it and t- tweeted them the picture. All right, you know, and I guess they're going to read them on their next show. But I, yeah, I'm going to attempt to participate because when they were going through them, I'm, I was answering them. As yeah, I was listening. it's a pretty neat uh, concept because it's basically like it isn't so much that you're reading books uh, it's for thirty like, days. Hey, it's, what's the your, the most like influential book of your life, bro? Right, or, or whatever, or like what's and, your comfort book? Or yeah, I exactly. Can't and then you go, you oh, have, it was this. Yeah. So what? is it like? Do you have a uh, website for the list? So if anyone was curious. <laughs> that would involve preparation. You're right. Hold on, they tweeted it to me. <laughs> That'd be easier to pull it up here. Noise. Um, because I, I I did have to ask him on Twitter because I tried to just Google it, you know. Yeah. And so there there's a ton of dopey comic book challenges, way more than I would have thought. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, and yeah. it's like some of the questions I heard were eh questions but there's some good questions in there well, the only one i couldn't answer was uh it was like what's the uh your favorite adaptation of an older work in a comic book and i've never read like you know oh uh fucking three men and a little baby to comic book you know, <laughs> you know or i wish god damn Same it here, actually. all right let's be all over that i think i think we should get with palicky and we need to get like get that license or whatever right that I want to write Steve excellent. Gutenberg, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. I'm close. Uh-huh. Sure you are. Ooh, listen to that. So, uh, yeah. I, I'll find it. I'll Lies. post the thing somewhere. I don't know. It'll, oh, there it is. 
Ooh. It's on goodcomics. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, it's on comic book resources, the 2015 31 Days of Comics Master List. Okay. The link is just kind of retarded. Oh, so I get you. Know. Okay. But it's on CBR's website? CBR, 31 Days of Comics. Okay. Because... I was 2015. Like, well, no, because I was thinking that I I may also participate like with them. Well, if you, you know, they they did the top nine for their most recent show, and then they're going to do the next seven and so yeah. on and so forth. Okay, so, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I don't want to steal their bit. So. Yeah, that's why I'm like, you know, if, if you want to hear it, listen to Comic Book Rose. It's a fine show about board games, comic books, and uh, lots of other hardcore. books too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, they do. But yeah, I, yeah, they've got a you know good stuff on that show. I enjoy it as well. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and yeah, like I felt the same way. I didn't want to, you know, just gank their bit and no, throw no. our salty goo all over it. Well, you kind we, you did. Don't lie. Well, I, but I, then you I were like doing it to everything. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you love throwing your salty goo all over. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like like it's know, harmless. Uh, <laughs> like multiple multiple migs over here. Right. <laughs> 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 it's like a seagull with the runs. <laughs> <laughs> or Spider-Man just uh, shooting his webs everywhere. It's true. See, the euphemisms I'm making in there, if you haven't figured it out, are all, you know. Talking about jizz. <laughs> <laughs> Way to peel the curtain back, Tony. Hey, you know, I try. That's true, it's true. All right, well, let's see. Why don't we... Well, we're about at an hour, so why don't we do a break, and then we'll come back, and we'll, I don't know, we'll uh, come back and have a dance party or something. Fucking sweet. You know, like we always do after break. That's true. Well, not really, I guess. We kind of had a dance party thing for a while when Tate was part of the show with music and stuff. Oh, yeah. Except she was kind of the only one dancing, but... Depends. When I was using my phone for a boombox a few times. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. I forgot about that, actually. <laughs> yeah, I used to dance like one of those stupid Bud Light cans. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Good call. Yeah, thank you. I kind of uh, want one of those for yeah. my future podcast studio. Yeah, that seems appropriate. One of those old dancing beer cans. Yeah, I like this idea. Yeah. But they can't be that hard to find on eBay or something. Sure or not. Or maybe... If you go to Amazon.com, after, of course, going to SaltyLanguage.com, scroll, 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 and then on the, was it the right-hand side, there's an Amazon link. If you click on that and go to Amazon, just shop as normal. It doesn't cost you anything extra. They throw us a couple cents or whatever, and it helps us to do things that we need, like upgrade our microphones or pay for cardboard for our dance parties or get bitches. I, I don't really know what we're doing with the money. All the bitches. Oh, sorry. All the... No. <laughs> Listen, folks, cocaine isn't cheap. We need some help. Help us out, all right? I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't even think... <laughs> I didn't know if he still had that on there. That's perfect. I pretty much don't delete sound effects. Perfect. Oh, by the way, I told Annalise that we were going to have a full soundboard of Annalise for when we do their show. So, <gasps> yeah, right? Anyway, we'll shop on... <laughs> Such a good idea. All right. Well, now that Tony just finished on his thigh, we'll we'll be right back. <laughs> hey, listeners. This is Jedi from over at Geek Dig, the second sexiest podcast on the network, and proud Salty Language Patreon. These guys do a hell of a job, don't they? Well, go help them out. Not right now. you got to finish listening to this episode. But as soon as you're done listening, here's what you do. Go to SaltyLanguage.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page and click the link that says, I want to be a supporter. From there, it's up to you. So go back to listening. Remember, when it comes time to take over the world, make sure you're on the geek side. Hello, welcome to Crazy Eddie's Podcast Sales Group. Need a podcast? We've got so many, we're giving them away. That's right, folks, we're giving them away for free with zero down, zero do it signing, and you can earn zero percent for life. When you come on board the Tangebound Network, we'll give you a podcast. Need that pesky RSS feed or compatible with iTunes and Stitcher radio problems? Not a problem. 
Need a place to store your podcast for the listeners to stream? No problem. Need an email address? No problem. But wait, there's more. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. The TBN is giving everything away for free. Everything must go. Contact the TBN now to get your own podcast for free. Some restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See tangentboundnetwork.com for details. Side effects may include nausea, upset stomach, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. The podcast you're listening to is probably not held responsible for the content of this message. Hey, how's that break, Brian? It was breaky. It was breaky. It was breaking too. Electric boogaloo, if you will. Oh, shit. I knew I was over here doing head spins. And yeah. Well, you got to stay in practice. Oh, I mean, you know, because oh. we never know when our posse's got to go, like, throw down. Exactly. This you is know? true. We got to defend our turf once in a while, you know. Second half of the show, better. <laughs> more, more brain juice? Or mind more juice? juice? Mind juice, sorry. Mind juice. Mind yes. juice. Yeah. Mind juice. <laughs> Mind the juice. <laughs> uh, so it was announced in a, a really odd fashion on uh, Raw this past week. Right. That they were like, oh, it's, you know, as and this is how they told the story on Raw. They were like, earlier today, TMZ's bro- uh, TMZ broke the news that <clears throat> this year, bef- you know, the day before WrestleMania, uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage will be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, as it should be because as it should be. As I saw on Twitter, I can't remember who it was, but it was basically like, if there's no Macho Man in the Hall of Fame, it's not a Hall of Fame. You know what I find this, and I didn't, I didn't know the story. Right, and I, this clip is perfect because I just this. asked you to just get some sound effects from Macho Man. Yes. And this is what I think. When I didn't, I thought he was in the Hall of Fame already, right? Because he should here's, be. Yeah. Here's what it is. Because it's mind-boggling to you, yeah. <laughs> mind-boggling, right? And it's you're absolutely right, Macho Man, or Macho King, as it were. I don't want to disrespect. Um, yeah, it's it, you know, like when he left WWE, you know, him and Vince had a falling out and whatnot. So there was the whole. You know, you know how Vince, like for a long time, it was kind of like with Ultimate Warrior, is like he'll never whatever for WWE yeah, again. Yeah, exactly. They resolved it last year because again, with you can't have a WWE Hall of Fame and not have Ultimate Warrior and Macho Man in there. You know that's just oh, ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing the. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you see what I did? Okay, all right. Yeah. Now, and Rob, they also had a bunch of the like uh, superstars do Macho Man impressions. And nice. most of them were not great. <laughs> <laughs> Booker T actually did a really good one, and he did the fingers thing and and everything. It was, but uh, yeah, it was, you know, it was still cool because you know everybody respects Macho Man because it's Macho Man, the cream of the crop. That's right, the tower of power, if you will. <laughs> Do you have that one? More seductive than sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sound drop we'll use again for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! You know they've been showing like the the montage of his career and such, and you know, and the weirdest part of the whole thing is that Hulk Hogan's going to be intru- uh, inducting him. What? Yeah. Damn it! I wish I would have pulled the Hulkamania's dead one. <laughs> oh god, the rap album. Well, write it down because that'll be great to find a link for that for the website. Um, what the rap album? Oh yeah, I forgot what it's oh, called. Oh, Macho Man's uh, rap album. Yeah, um, I think it was just called "Do It" or something like that. <laughs> it's something like that. It's yeah. Not good. Um, no, there's a song clip. We just like Hulkamania's dead. Oh <laughs> right, like, right. <laughs> but I was like, eh, we're probably not going to reference Hulk. <laughs> eh, well, when he, well, you didn't know what was, the story was, so, you know. It's true. Yeah, it surprised a lot of people that Hogan. I mean, they reconciled, I guess, because. <laughs> Because Macho Man's rap album actually has a diss track to Hogan on it. <laughs> that, that's what I'm writing down for right. the website is the diss track. Yeah, and um, <laughs> it's just it just cracks me up that Hogan and Macho Man both had albums. You yeah, know, I know. Like it's kind of like it's le- kind of like le- because it's mind boggling to you. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Right. <laughs> oh man, because I'll tell you, you know, like interview wise watching wrestling as a kid like and you know when it came down to the mega powers colliding when hogan was against macho man i was a hogan guy because i right it's hogan he's like you know he's the immortal hulk hogan it's true take your vitamins <sighs> eat your vegetables say, say your prayers believe in yourself believe in God. daily right 
<laughs> make sex tapes of right after you've eaten a lot of food. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, too full. <false. laughs> <laughs> which would be, which sounds like the name of a, a, a Dead Kennedys album, doesn't it? Kind of. Yeah. Or a Fat Boy song. <laughs> oh. <laughs> too full to fuck. <laughs> right? I was like, too drunk to fuck, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, that's not Dead Kennedys, is it? Did I get that right? I think I was. Okay. Yeah, I think I was okay. too drunk to fuck. <sighs> Damn, I'm glad Tate doesn't listen, because if I got that wrong, she'd probably kill me. Um, it's true. Other people may as well, but eh, whatever. Um, She's more lethal. She, yeah. Exactly, because she, she could fit in, like, heat vents and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying, you know. Yeah. She's got all all the the dangerous elements that Tammy from Parks and Rec has. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but tinier. <laughs> but tinier, right? Um, but you know, it was like I love listening to Macho Man do his interviews with Lord Alfred Hayes or with uh, Mean Gene. I mean, it, it you know he doesn't have the let me tell you something mean gene you know but it's still his interviews <laughs> were so good <laughs> when i was going through youtube videos to find clips yeah he's got one where he pulls a trash can out of nowhere yeah because he's talking about how tito santana's trash <laughs> he's like he's trash mean gene they pulls a towel out of it and just drapes it over gene's face yeah he goes here's a crying towel for you <laughs> <laughs> you know and it's <laughs> funny because The Rock used to do shit like that with Michael Cole before Cole right. was, like, doing the play-by-play stuff. Like, every yeah. time The Rock would go to talk to him, he would put, like, a T-shirt over his head or something. And I don't – I'm guessing that was a throw to Macho Man because Macho Man did that a few times. <laughs> right. Yeah, because I used to love it when The Rock would do that. Michael Cole would start talking, and The Rock was just, like, put his hand up to him, like, put a T-shirt over his head, and then just run <laughs> the interview, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if, if you, especially if you're a wrestling fan, but even if you're not – like look up Macho Man or Macho King. Um, just some of he he's almost as fun to watch the interviews on because he's just crazy. He's almost well, as know, fun I, as watching. I'll, I'll, I'll put another video up okay. of him because they've got a couple best of promos. Oh, there you go. And, and, and one of them's pretty fantastic. Yeah. I'll put that up too. It's almost as much fun as watching the Ric Flair ones. You know, I mean, I still stand by. I think Ric Flair is still the best wrestler to ever get behind a microphone, you know, as far as the promos. And there's a lot of guys I can put up in that category and stuff, but just I I mean the the promo that this this comes the from cream of the crop. Yeah. is fantastic because yeah. he keeps pulling coffee creamers <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> and then he throws one. And then he's talking to me and he talk about how he's the cream of the crop and he pulls on a creamer out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually he like one time he sets it on top of his head and does like a three sixty. Wow. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's so seriously bizarre. the dude was totally crazy and whatever. So and I know we're both big fans as evidenced by Tony rocking the Macho Man t shirt. It is not a fine tonight, t-shirt. but at times, yeah. Yeah. And I have, you know, the Funko Pops. I went, as soon as I saw they made a macho man, I was like, I have to have one of those. Yeah, and, dude, it's macho. And I have. And I yeah. need I need to get Bone the one. saw is ready. <laughs> dude, that <laughs> was my favorite. <laughs> I, I'm part of this wrestling group from um fellow Pod Gods Network um uh, podcast, uh doing the job. Right. Um they actually they have a Facebook group that is all sorts of fun. So if you happen to like wrestling, like if you watch Raw and whatever, there's a group of us that, like, it's just we just talk about the show. We make fun of stuff. It's a lot of fun. And uh, anyway, I was in there on Monday, and uh, someone was like, Macho Man, are you ready for uh, uh, to go into the Hall of Fame? And then they had a the oh, picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had a picture, and it was like, Bonesaw is ready. <laughs> nice. Bonesaw is ready. Yep. <laughs> Just the way he says ready in that. <laughs> oh, so good. So good. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why I said it's It's one of those, you know, every once in a while when WWE gets one of these kind of guys, and it's like, finally, because it's how it should be, you know? You know what it is, Brian. Now, I will say, I wish they had a legitimate Hall of Fame that you could go visit, because I would love to go visit, like, a WWE Hall of Fame. Well, for sure. But I don't, I know there's a Wrestling Hall of Fame, but it's not the same thing. Well, but you know what that would be. I, I don't. More seductive than sex. <laughs> <laughs> now, are we talking about the podcast? Well, of course. Because that almost seems like a great way to open the show now. If you ever retool More the seductive than sex. If you re- if you retool our opening at any point, I'm just saying. I've been kind of kicking around, you know. Think about changing, like updating some of the movies in there and whatnot. Right. Right. Yeah. If so, you know, what would be great is to do one of of uh, wrestling, like from our youth. Our youth. Our youth. Because you know, yeah, like. Uh, 
what do you call it, the Road Warriors and these guys and, uh, you know, various Hogan ones and what have you. Probably right. an Ultimate Warrior one or something in there, too. It wouldn't surprise me. Ric Flair, because, oh, man, speaking of, while we're on the topic of wrestling, before we move on, did you see that after the Colts won, did you see the guy, for, the one guy for the Colts did a whole Ric Flair promo? No, I missed yeah, that. Yeah, he did the, we're the high-flying, profiling, jet-setting, he did the whole thing. And while he's doing it, when he paused, all the other guys are like, woo! And then at the end, he's like, he's like, at the very end, as he pulls everyone in, he's like, give me a Go Colts and a, and a Ric Flair. And they're like, Go Colts! Woo! <laughs> That's hilarious. It was fantastic. Actually, I'll write that down because I'll. Uh... They're still not going to beat the Patriots, but that's hilarious. <laughs> that's fans. <laughs> I kind of want him to now just for that. <laughs> I want right. to see if he does another one. <laughs> but he he nailed it, and it wasn't like reading off his hand. I mean, this dude knew what he was talking about. Right. I forgot his name now. I feel bad, but I'll. My I'll... cleats <laughs> cost more than your house. Yeah, it was. Oh God. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> and, and it. <laughs> oh shit! I'm just thinking of the you know women eighteen to you know eighteen to forty you know who want to know what a real man's like you know the nature boys here for you. Just fucking. <laughs> oh, I could sit and watch wrestling promos like all damn day. I swear. I know. I was I was having all kinds of laughs when I was coming through these would. Macho Man ones, and that's part of why when I was like, oh, I, you know, I kind of want at least one Macho Man sound drop here, and I was like, oh, I'll just mention it to Tony. I know I'll have a good time combing through them because, oh yeah, how can you not? Exactly. You know, I actually think there's a bit of a missed opportunity for WWE over the years when they've done various DVDs. They should have put. They should have just put out like the best of Ric Flair's whatever and sold it. Like the, his promos? Yeah, or the best of wrestling promos and just put out, you know, a bunch of them. Because there's been so many really good ones from The Rock and Stone Cold and, you know. Uh, and Shockmaster. Shock. <laughs> Which, I'm, if it wasn't for the whole, like, not wearing much upper body-wise, would so be my Halloween costume. Because <laughs> I would just stagger. Like, you just, like, I need someone to open the door and get to the top of your steps and just fall in, basically. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, but I've kind of wondered why WWE hasn't done that. Like the best of like with promos, cause they own all that footage, you know? Yeah. yeah I don't, and I honestly don't know. Tons of it, you know, and they can pull from WCW and, and ECW too. Cause they own all that footage, you know? Right. Uh, but yeah. So, you know, that's enough wrestling talk. Cause I'm sure I've bored the hell out of a lot of people. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh well dear. you know i mean i i gotta just do it one more time more seductive than sex now, I, you can play yes. that as much as you would like to because i seriously that is one sound drop that needs to stay on the board forever <laughs> the, there was one that i almost pulled too and it's just it's Mata just going muscles muscles oh, muscles God, yes. muscles <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> You know, and the thing is, part of what I love about that era is that most or all of those promos were seriously just off the cuff. Right. Now you got guys, like, a lot of what these guys come out and say are, they're pre-written. Like, they're yeah. scripted completely. Like, even The Rock now, when he comes out and does them, like, I don't know if you remember, was it a couple years ago when he was uh, feuding with John Cena? He actually had shit written on his hand, and Cena called him out on it on the show. That's pretty funny. And, and it yeah, it apparently angered a lot of people and whatnot because The Rock had never really written down notes, but the way the camera work was, you could see him on his hand. Right. And I was like, aw. Because, you know, you think of all those great Rock promos, and then you're kind of like, man, were they all scripted? Or, you I know, don't know. I, just some of the shit I've seen of him online and yeah. whatnot. Well, you know? from what it sounds like, it sounds like it's a, like a lot of the comedies that are on TV now where there's that like loose script but they right. can kind of ad lib as, as they want. It sounds like that's kind of how, because he had a writing partner for his promos, right? You know, but Boy, if you want if you want some inspiration, check out the Rock's Instagram. Jesus Christ, oh, God. <laughs> inspiration, nothing, man. I'm just like Jesus Christ. I saw somebody posting like, I wish the Rock would come, you know, like inspire me to. Blo I'm like, dude, one day with the Rock, and I'd probably be dead. You know, well, even that, it's like, like you look at his Instagram, it'll be like just a screen cap of his phone from of the alarm going off at like 
three thirty yeah. for him to go hit the gym. That's right. know, like in the bang, morning, banging them, <laughs> bangs and clangs. Insane. I think that's what he says. Isn't it? Bangs and clangs or whatever it is. Bangs and clangs. Yeah, yeah exactly. Isn't the rock is banging and clang. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, that dude is crazy about his workouts. For sure. And it's weird because as he's gotten older, he's gotten crazier about them. Like when he was in his prime in WWE, he really wasn't that cut. It was only when he went right. into movies that he got like, shredded. Swole. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, whatever. More power to him, man. I just don't have the want to do that. <laughs> I have the want to look as good as he does. I'd love to have that physique, but Dude, I don't have that I've, want to I've put the effort. I've tried so hard to get up in the morning and exercise. That's yeah. just not in well, me. Well, I think part of it, though, too, is you got to remember, I mean, he was an athlete in, yeah. in school, you know, so he started this concept way, way back, you know, whereas, you know, you're a 30-something man trying to, you know, you know, stay somewhat in shape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I really didn't know what I wanted to say there. I was kind of like, ah, I don't know. Because well, I'm always like, I like I always work out after work. Yeah, and sometimes it's like, oh, it's a drag. Oh, you know? sure, yeah. Because you've already I, put in. Yeah, I've already worked yeah. my ass off during the day, so it's like right. It's like putting if, in a workout after a workout. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. So it's like if I could somehow get up with enough time to work out and yeah. then get my day going. Well, it's like when I first and found I've tried, out, but it's fucking brutal. It's like when I first found out that some athletes like work out day of games and stuff, and I'm like, how the fuck do you go put a workout in? And I know they're probably, you know, it's more probably stretching and plyometric kind of, you know, like just to stay loose and all Warming that. Up, getting ready. Yeah. But it's just still like, man, how do you go put a workout in and then go play four hours of football or, you know, or whatever you do, you know, even if it's a 10 minute wrestling match or something, you know? Right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Are you being assaulted? Well, you know, it's that time of the day where it's like, I'm going to fuck up this fake mouse. Nice. Hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got a question for you. Yes. Did you hear or have you heard the story about Kurt Busch, the NASCAR driver? No. Oh, you are in for a treat then. This was one, I, you know, I know we don't really do news stories anymore, but I have to read this one essentially because you need kind of all the details to it. All right. I, I'm in. Okay. Although it is racing. Well, stay with me. It's worth it. I'm trying. The headline right. is NASCAR driver accused of assault says his ex is a trained assassin. You're in, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so far, so good. Right. The NASCAR driver known as the outlaw said he believes his ex-girlfriend... the outlaw. Well, Whatever. he's... For racing, he is. He's a crazy dude. Why do racing guys have douchey nicknames? Uh, cause... Ah, the fucking outlaw. <laughs> no, they you're not. They call me Tree Roots Johnson. <laughs> I just, you just, I just had another Florentine moment there when you're like, ah, the outlaw. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know? you're not. <laughs> you drive in a circle. Like, nobody calls you that. You don't even that. change your own tires. <laughs> <laughs> you follow the rules. Um, hey, if you were really an outlaw, you'd drive backwards. <laughs> um, said his, he believes his ex-girlfriend is a trained assassin who was dispatched on covert missions around the world, or said that she, all that, and she once returned to him in a blood-splattered gown. Well, it's just that time of the month. <laughs> oh. Kurt Busch appeared in court again Tuesday over Patricia Driscoll's request for a no-contact order. Everyone on the outside can tell me I'm crazy, but I lived on the inside and saw it firsthand, Bush said, when his attorney, Rusty Harden, who also represented uh, Roger Clemens. <laughs> he goes, I lived on the inside. He points at her vagina. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no, he's the I outlaw. Took a pit stop there. No, he... Yeah, high five. <laughs> <laughs> he's the outlaw. He lives out back. That's you right. catch my yeah. drift. Oh. <laughs> time, time my horse to that dirty road. <laughs> oh, shit. Where was I? Um, oh, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's what you should get for the soundboard. Like various Florentine things. <laughs> no, no, you're not. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> Quit acting tough. Uh, in an interview late Tuesday, Driscoll called Bush's assertion ludicrous saying he took it straight from a fictional movie script she's been working on for eight years and ha that he has proofread because you know having a nascar driver proofread your script's a great idea in court Jesus. bush continued the push of his legal team to discredit his ex as a scorned woman out to destroy his career portraying her as a character fit for a screenplay bush said driscoll repeatedly asserted her assassin status and claimed the work took her on missions across central and south america and africa he recounted one time when the couple was in El Paso, Texas. 
He said Dr- Driscoll left in camouflage gear, only to return later wearing a trench coat over an evening gown covered with blood. If you know I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. A day earlier, Bush said his ex-girlfriend told him she was a mercenary who killed people for a living and had shown him pictures of bodies with gunshot wounds. Bush said Tuesday that Driscoll claimed that a female character in Zero Dark Thirty, a film depicting the CIA's hunt for Osama bin Laden, was a composite of her and other women. Last month, Michael Doncheff, who served as a personal assistant to Bush and Driscoll, said an ailing Driscoll called him, or told him in September that she'd been picked up by a big man and slammed to the ground while help, while helping round up immigrants at the Mexican border. A story Doncheff considered far fetched. Don Chef mm. and Driscoll also asserted that she was a trained assassin for the U.S. government and once told him, I take down foreign governments. I own Washington. During the Does hearing, she? No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> During the hearing, which stretched over four days, neither Driscoll nor her attorney refuted the testimony. In a telephone interview with the AP late Tuesday, Driscoll dismissed Bush's assertions. These statements made about being a trained assassin, hired killer, are ludicrous and without basis and are an attempt to destroy my credibility, she said. Not even Rusty Harden believes this. I felt it interesting that... Sounds like a sex move, the Rusty (laughs) Harden. (laughs) (laughs) It's when neither of you has had sex for a while and you're without lube, right? (laughs) The Rusty Harden, yeah. Hey, you know, we had a few truck cocktails that took her back to my place, gave her the old Rusty (laughs) Harden. I think you're misremembering things. See, because he represented Roger Clemens with the misremembering thing. Anyway, uh, Bush testified Monday that he decided to end his relationship with Driscoll after a race last fall because she was monopolizing his schedule and he needed to focus on racing. Driscoll and Bush assaulted her. Bush, or I'm sorry, Driscoll said Bush. You just say he assaulted her, Bush. Yeah, I, I did, did actually. More seductive than sex. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Thanks, Macho. Driscoll said Bush assaulted her in his motorhome at Dover International Speedway. Well, you know, when they're they're at the race, they all have motorhomes, you know. (laughs) Grabbing her by the throat and slamming her head into a wall three times. Bush said his. Stoutly built motorhome. Yes, right. Bush said his attorneys have denied the allegations, which are the subject of a separate criminal investigation. Driscoll's attorney, Carolyn McNeese, cross-examined uh, Bush on Tuesday, but few of her questions dealt directly with the assault allegations. Bush had testified that he repeatedly told Driscoll to leave after she showed up unannounced at his motorhome, finally cupping her cheeks in his hands, looking, yeah, he her, did. looking her in the eye and telling her she had to go. He, quote, he advised that her head tapped the wall as he was doing that. Detective James Wood, not Woods, but Wood, said... Oh, not as cool. Not as cool. Testified Tuesday. The rest of it is essentially just meh. But I wanted to get down to that last point because of, um, first of all, she's a trained assassin, but he was able to get the jump on her and slam her head into the wall. That's what I was kind of thinking. Be, well, he's got those driver reflexes. Right. I've seen Speed Racer. Right. Rubbin's racing. I get you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, he's about to go race in the corner. Um, see what I did I there? Can. <laughs> Now, the other thing was, I love the... That's a spunk corner. <laughs> sure it is. Turn left! <laughs> um, I love the fact that his testimony, or his comments to the detective were that he, that her head tapped the wall as he was cupping her cheeks. Tapped the wall. But, butt cheeks. Right. Yeah, so this dude is... Like off his damn rocker, or what do you mean? She lives an amazing life. I don't know which. I'm guessing he's crazy. Yeah. Well, he is the outlaw. Uh, well, uh, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to say he's not Jesse James? Maybe he's the Definitely bad guy. Not. He's the bad guy, like Razor oh, Ramon. He's, he's no Razor Ramon. No, he sure isn't. No one beats the bad guy. Exactly, because Razor Ramon would have tapped her lightly into a cabinet, no. would have razor edged her <laughs> <laughs> through the little shitty table that you make into a couch. That's so true. <laughs> I just saw this story the other day, and I was like, oh, my God. It's like we haven't done a news story in a while, and this one sure as hell fit the bill for me, even though I, you know, neither one of us give two shits about NASCAR unless we're watching um, uh, Talladega Nights. 
Well, that's shake and bake. Shake and bake, or or unless we're talking about white mud. <laughs> well, naturally. Rubbin's racing. That's a callback. Rubbin is racing. And an episode of the show that it's a fine episode. You should go back and listen to. Sure is. I saw that truck about two months ago again, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the inspiration for White Mudden? Yeah. The I'm sorry, the, the White Mudden franchise, because we went, what, three or six movies deep? <laughs> we, boy, did we. <laughs> well, uh. that's what we do, right, Macho? Oh. You were supposed to have that. Oh, yeah! yeah. He was, well, what can you say? Macho Man's late. Oh, oh, dead joke. Oh. <laughs> Why would I do that? <sighs> All right, so on to anything else here. Um... New Avengers trailer? Oh, yes. Yes, that was... I, know I liked that's, it. That's, you know, all the rage, apparently. Uh, the first... I thought the first trailer they released was uh, better. Yeah. But that was a good trailer. Right, because, like, the big deal in this one is that wh- whoever it is that's, like, disrobing in that, like, crazy... They're in some, like, cave or something, and it shows the... I don't know if it's a guy or a woman, whatever, like like, taking some sort of, like, a cloak or something off. And yeah. everybody's like, oh, who is that? You know, and there's a lot of uh, speculation there, over that. There, and, you know, there was more like, hey, here's more to Hulk Buster. And yeah. Clearly, Hulk is doing shit and setting up Civil War, it looks like. I honestly think what they should have done was not put more of that in the commercial. Yeah. I, I think they know, should have just given us a little taste of the Hulk Buster in the first one and maybe just kind of leave it alone for a while. Because people right. were so geeked over the the Hulkbuster. the Hulkbuster, yeah. I mean, I understand though, because like people who don't know, they don't. You know, a lot of people may not understand what Civil War even is, aside from you know. Well, let's let's be honest. All right. Marvel could just put out a trailer that had <laughs> the Avengers logo, yeah, and like crazy like Mexican music playing, and Uncle Tickle. And Uncle Tickle, like, <laughs> like you know, and you can't quite tell, but you think he has his hand down his pants. <laughs> well, it's Uncle Tickle. One hand's always it's just, in his well, pants. It's just the way it's cropped, <laughs> right? You know? Listen, you there's, can't, it's not a hundred percent, but you're there, pretty sure. There's always a hand in Uncle Tickle's pants. It's just a matter of whose it is, <laughs> <laughs> and if it's forced there or not. Right? Is it yours? <laughs> but they, they could just do that and have it on the screen for no joke, a minute and a half. <laughs> it's just crazy music. Avengers logo, Uncle Tickle <laughs> touching himself. You're probably and right. Avengers will make a billion and a half dollars. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah, you're you're probably not wrong. <laughs> you know, I I don't think the second trailer really like did a whole lot. I, you know, I was talking again. I was talking with uh, uh, Fluffy Bunny Ash about this the other night. And I was like, I don't know that there's going to be a trailer they can release that's going to make me, like, shit my pants because I'm so excited. Because I'm already excited, and I already have expectations for it. Yes. You know, I go back again to, like, when we talked about Guardians. You know, when I was seeing those commercials, I didn't know anything about the damn movie. So as I saw each commercial, I was like, okay. You know, each one kind of built on the previous one. With Avengers, I don't, I just don't think it can do that for me. I think I'm already as, like... Like, is rigid as I'm gonna May get, or whatever the movie's coming out yet. What was that? Is you're, you're already like, is it May or yeah, whatever? exactly, yeah. yeah. Like, is it out yet? No. All right. Like, I like, I don't, I don't care. Don't stop showing me shit. Just yeah. Show me the movie. Yeah. At this point, I'm kind of like, I just want it to come out because I want to see it. Yeah. It really like Ant Man is one that's gonna have to build on on you know the trailer to get me to really like you know it'll be a movie I want to see, but I'm not like, oh my god, Ant Man, you know. Right. I'm more excited about Macho Man going in the Hall of Fame, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure. Right. Or about, you know, my hobo reality show. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, also true. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's that. But, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying I mean, it's bad. It, not in any way. It's, it's, no, you know, it's a fine trailer. Yeah. And I hear you. It's, a lot of the stuff they showed was stuff that was pretty much related, directly related to the first yeah. trailer. And it, so it, it was pretty yeah, much I didn't expected. feel like they're giving away too much. Exactly. Aside from that little... That little clip of whoever that is in that cave or whatever it is. That's the only thing that, you know, that's really kind of like, hmm. And I, I'm, I'm sitting there going, all right. And I know there's tons of speculation. A lot of people seem to think it's like Black Panther maybe because there's a lot of rumors that Black Panther will be in the movie. Right. And I'm just like, I just don't know how much 
I just don't like that's not going to excite me anymore. I can't imagine most people are going to get super excited because Black Panther's in the movie. You know what I mean? The Black Panthers will. Uh, well, <laughs> fight the power, right? Fight the power. So I don't know. We'll see though. I'm definitely excited for the movie. I can't wait for it to freaking come oh, yeah, out. I want to sure. see it, but yeah. yeah. I just like I said, I just don't think I can get more excited for it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> it's kind of like you know, <clears throat> guy finally gets to you know have the three way he's been thinking of his whole life, and then the girl's like, "Oh, by the way, it's actually now four way. I'm adding another woman," and it's like, "Yeah, this is already as hard as it's gonna get." <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it gets any harder, it's just going to pop like a yeah. hot dog on the grill. <laughs> I was going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> Damn it, man. Synergy! Man, we are just crushing each other's stuff tonight. <sighs> That's true. All right. So, uh, let's see what we get here. You want want to talk a little comics? Or do you want... Hey, well, I only read one. Yeah. I didn't read... Really... Yeah, I could talk about it. <laughs> well, let's talk about it, because, I mean, it's the biggest book of the week, both in sales and... Uh, subject matter, all that stuff. And it was uh, Star Wars number one. Star Wars, you sick fucks. Written by out. Jason. Huh? It was written by Jason Aaron, and art was by uh, John Cassidy. I enjoyed the art. Because the, the dude like made I'm like, oh, I'm that's you. definitely fucking Han Solo. That's definitely yeah. Princess uh, Leia. John Cassidy Leia. is Sorry. an artist that I think is one of those guys that everybody knows is really good, but I don't think if you were like, hey, name the ten best artists in comics right now. I don't know right. that his name makes that list by most people, and that's a shame because he's a hell of an artist. He did an amazing run on Captain America, you know, and, and the covers are just immaculate. And I love, like, what I love about him is there's not a lot of, of waste in his work. Like, there's not a bunch of just willy-nilly lines. Right. Looking like it's Todd McFarlane in the 90s or something, you know. Like, holy shit, Spawn's cape has eight and a half million folds in it. <laughs> right? How's that possible? <laughs> I just It's not even... I, it's just it's that crazy of a cape. Hell, hell power does that. <laughs> oh, fucking hell capes. <laughs> Ooh, hell capes. Yeah, I'd like to take my hell cape <sighs> to like a laundromat. Nah, nah, forget De- that. Wrinkle this. <laughs> nope, nope. I want to be part of the fighting hell capes. Ooh, that's nice. our new superhero sports team. <laughs> the fighting hell capes. <laughs> fighting hell capes. <laughs> right. <laughs> that would. That that's going to be my next blood bowl team. <laughs> the fighting hell capes. I like yes. it. Yes, it's all going to be variants of superheroes' names. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, so, no, you know, and Jason Aaron's been on fire lately with Southern Bastards and, uh, uh, the Thor title that's out right now, and, oh, shit, what else is he writing? Men of Wrath. Uh, he wrote Scalped, which was an amazing book. I can't right. remember, there's something else that he's writing, like, just recently or current. Anyway, but he, you know, generally he's, he's pretty strong. And he, the book takes place, like, what is it, right after... It's like right in between New Hope and Empire, like yeah. right after the Death Star gets blown right. the fuck up. <laughs> it certainly did. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you think of it? it I, I thought it was pretty good. I did too. I, and you know, I'm I'm I I'm a s i am admit it, I'm a Star Wars fucking nerd. Right. Whereas right? I'm not the biggest Star Wars nerd. Yeah, you're not. And yeah. I, I read it and I'm like, God damn it, I'm gonna be reading this. And then I, I got to the end of the book and I'm like, God damn it, I'm gonna read Darth Vader. Now. <laughs> yep. Because he has his own fucking book. <laughs> yep, that's the same thing I thought too. <laughs> like when I saw that and I was like, Oh man, i of course there's gonna be other books because it's Star Wars. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Star Wars can't just do a one off of anything. <laughs> Toy I don't think movie. I'm gonna read the Princess Leah book unless I hear good things about it. Yeah, you know what's funny about that book is that the arts by Terry Dodson, and Terry Dodson has drawn some really curvy, voluptuous types of women's over the years. Yeah, this doesn't look like his best work. Like the but, art that they showed, I was like, this looks a little weak for him. Ah, they made her. You know, those. It, it was like the little preview they gave was the, hey, you just blowed the fuck out of Death Star. Yeah, here's a here's some dopey shiny metal for no reason. <laughs> you know, right. But they they made they made uh, made her look extra hot. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, that's that's well, that's that was what nice that that's what Terry Dotson generally does. Like if you yeah. look up his art and look at various women's, and he's known he drew uh, Black Cat various times. Uh, well, he's drawn a lot of women and stuff, and uh, you know normally he's he's really good at it. But I don't know. I just like the other like all the art in it. It was like it just didn't look like his best stuff. Right. So, I mean, whatever. Not that I I won't read it because of him. Because there's only one artist that will completely turn me off of a book. We all know who it is. 
he who shall not be named. <laughs> exactly. Because I think if you say his name like one and a half times, he appears. Uh, probably hoping that someone will keep him like, relevant. Oh, shit. Is that a paycheck? <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, I just started another new company. Yeah. Ugh. Jesus Christ. He's had more comic companies, I think, than anyone or studios well, or whatever. I'm pretty sure his next comic office should be like the inside of his car. <laughs> and there should be a hose going into his window from his tailpipe. <sighs> Listen, you know what I'm saying? First of all, I, just for those who don't know, if you're new to the show or whatever, I'm talking about Rob Liefeld, and I'm trying real, really hard to just stay calm here. Because normally <laughs> just the mention of his name sends me into a rage. But <laughs> You'll have that. I've said plenty of times, I don't like his art. I don't get his art. I think he disrespects other artists that work hard and hone their craft. But I also get that he's... Listen, if you can draw like him and get that paper, get it. I wish I could draw like shit like him and make the money he's made in comics over the years. It's true. I mean, sure, he's been sued a few times for straight out stealing, which we've talked about before. But <sighs> anyway, back to Star Wars. Yes. Vader was yeah, a complete I, badass uh, in that book, wasn't he? Yes. Oh my for god! Sure. I don't want to give anything away. Like seriously, if you like Star Wars, you're gonna you're gonna like this book. I think I haven't seen any real bad reviews for it. No, I I enjoyed it. Like yeah. I said, I I read it. And I'm like fuck, because I wasn't really <laughs> sure what they're doing. Yeah, me either. I didn't know so where I was like, it was gonna right. take place. I, I, and then like I said, I saw the little like two page preview book for Darth Vader number one. I'm like I'm like God. Well, here you go. Shut up and take my money. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's probably that man. There's so many sound bites. I wish we had. Um, Dude, you have no idea. I know. No, oh, I do. I do. We if we could both have a soundboard, I'm sure we probably would. <laughs> probably. Ah, <laughs> soundboards everywhere. Um. Yeah, seriously. If 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 you didn't pick this book up, I mean, <laughs> you shouldn't have a problem finding it. They only copy. made a million of them. Oh no, and there's a second printing. Oh well, there you go. Yeah. So whatever. But it's really good. The art, the art is fantastic. Uh, John Cassidy really nails the likenesses of all the characters. His Chewbacca is fantastic. No, I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> the Vader is phew, spot on. <laughs> yeah, phew. stormtroopers. Yep. In fairness, Fucking though, sick. like oh. seriously though, like it, the likenesses are really good. The Han and and uh, Luke and and Leia are really strong. Yeah, there was one panel that it was you know Leia. I was like, it it looked like yeah. What's her name in her prime that I can't Carrie, remember her Carrie name Fisher. off the top of my head? Carrie Fisher. Yes, yeah, thank you. It looks like it looked like Carrie Fisher in her prime. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, so you said that's all you read. So you didn't get around to uh Batman Eternal, which is a book we've been reading. So. Nope. 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 No, like I said I uh my whole my whole evening of throwing some books into my face tonight before we recorded <laughs> right. got derailed by fist fuck friday well that'll uh, happen that'll happen boy will it i'm still limping all right well i'm gonna run through a couple books real quick here then avengers number 40 is um like another story it's part of the um the the world goes boom or whatever they call it storyline in um avengers where basically right. the the cover says four months to live or four months to the end or whatever the hell it says um it was a really good issue, and I cannot recommend... Like, if, if you dig comic art, like I do, you should look up the cover for this book and see what Dale Keown did to it. It's fucking amazing. And for those of you who, you know, uh, don't remember him, he did a book called Pit for Image oh, forever nice. ago. Before that, he did various work for Marvel and stuff, too. But uh, he, the art, the Thanos and stuff that he draws on the cover of this book, are they're amazing. Like, he did a really, right. really good job on this. He doesn't do the interior art, but he did the, the cover art for it. The super special cover? No, it's just a regular cover, even. It's not even like a variant or something. But, oh. Yeah. Anyway, but the book was really good. It's wrapping up. <clears throat> you know, we're getting closer to the end of the... Uh, the kids, you know, there's the cabal or, you know, the evil group. And then there's the Illuminati who are the group that are supposed to try to stop the cabal. And then there's, uh, Steve Rogers, who's trying to stop all of it <laughs> or sell Fords. Yeah. Or sell Fords as you, if you want to check my Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> which is monotony underscore. Yeah. Cause some other fuck has monotony jerks. Anyway, so I, I, I gave a – well, real quick, let's go back. Uh, what did you rate yes, Star Wars? I'll give it a four. I gave it a four and a half. 
Because that book was near, oh. and again, I'm not oh. a big Star Wars geek, but I just I loved it. Like the the action right. in the book's great. The story feels like a Star Wars movie. It, yeah. it really felt like it well, picked it, right up. It even it even opened like a Star Wars movie, almost. Yeah, except for like, where it like, said, like when I when it was like the first you know page was a long time ago in the, in the yeah. Galaxy Far Far Away in the blue. Yeah. And then the next page is just the Star Wars logo. In my head, I heard a <laughs> yep. you know, like, And then oh. the scrolling text, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> That's all I heard in my head. I'm like, I, well, they managed to do that right. They they really, they, they you know. They did it right, you sick fucks. Again, I'm going to go back to, uh, you yeah. know, Ash that I talked to. She made the comment that, uh, you know, it, it really kind of proves that Disney knows what the fuck they're doing. You know? Well, I mean, when you yeah. have uh, uh, a mouse in charge, yeah, that's actually the the guise of Satan, <laughs> right? He's using all that hell magic. <laughs> he's, like, he's got all that hell magic. He's got his hell cape. <laughs> well, of course, fully unfurled. <laughs> <laughs> yes, an unfurled reference. Nice. Yes, I love when we get words like that and shant and you know <laughs> those kind of yeah, things. Exactly. That... But yeah, she's got a point though. You know, look at since Marvel has been bought by Disney, look at the upturn Marvel has taken. Look at you know with Star Wars. I mean, there was a report was it this week or whatever that came out and said George Lucas was already planning Star Wars Seven when Disney was like, "Hey, we should buy all your stuffs for all the money in the world." Yeah, right. And so it looks like Disney probably saved us from a god awful Star Wars Seven coming up. You know, we'll see. But yeah, I mean, you know, I don't want to. Shit on George Lucas, you, you right? Kinda, you kind of, you do. But I, I, I mean, but then there's Jar Jar Binks, right? I mean, I, he, if anyone deserves a dick punch after that, <laughs> it's like, how could you do that after all these other things you gave us? Exactly, you gave us Darth Vader, and then you gave us Jar Jar. <laughs> it's like, how dare you, you, sir? Son of a bitch! I wish I could remember I what our George. I know. Lucas I, <laughs> I don't even know. I'm not even going to try. We should go back and listen because I can't remember. I, I guess I'm willing to take a dick punch now. <laughs> I think and that's goes, fairly close. Yeah, yeah I think so. <clears throat> Man, it's been like, so well, long. Well, I, it's like, well, I'm going to have someone pinch hit my dick punch. <laughs> you know, here comes Mike Tyson. <laughs> pinch, hit, <laughs> pinch hit my dick punch. That sounds yeah. like a great show name. Sorry, George. I got to punch you in the dick now. <laughs> <laughs> Although I really respect your movies. <laughs> I bet you like Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> no! <laughs> Damn it, Mike. Now we got to punch you in the dick. My, like my favorite things were ass. <laughs> I love those. They're not ass. The Imperial Walker. Well, <laughs> he starts going into they're not ass. They're ATATs. And yeah. <laughs> or Imperial <laughs> Walkers. Punch. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, no one's going to argue because it's Mike. What are you going to do? Well, yeah, it's, He's a maniac. I wouldn't try to punch him in the dick. I don't care if he doesn't even fight anymore. If he didn't even train anymore, I still wouldn't want to punch yeah. him in the dick. I used to punch my tiger in the balls. I <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not going to punch you. <laughs> and if nothing, no other reason, it's just because he's crazy. I just wouldn't want to mess with crazy, you know? Yeah, dude, anyone has a face tattoo, walk the fuck away. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> if, they, if they just, I mean, tribal shit's out. Yeah. It's on his face. It's on his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, that's a, a give zero fucks. That's what that is right there. Because exactly. there's not much you can do about that now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, unless he just gets it filled in. Yeah, or something. I mean, basically, a tramp stamp ejaculated on his cheek. Yeah, and you know, at least a tramp stamp, a t-shirt will cover up. You know, I mean, a t-shirt yeah. will cover up his face tattoo also. But <laughs> <laughs> well, a la Michael Cole, <laughs> right? <laughs> or you can put a crying towel on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so back to. Um, Avengers, I thought was I I, I rated it a four and a half because I thought it was really good. Like the way they wrapped this, this arc of the story up, and <clears throat> and set it going forward. Hickman's killing it right now, right? And that makes me feel good because Hickman is like the main writer on the upcoming Marvel like shenanigans that are going to be happening. So so far, I, he hasn't really made me feel like he's steering into an iceberg, you know. <laughs> I spy, get it. <laughs> oh, yeah, bring it. <laughs> what you got? Oh, I... yeah. <laughs> what you the got? The elbow I drops spark? it and splits hey. it in half. Well, naturally. <laughs> Saves the Titanic. <laughs> Dude, time traveling macho. Oh, this just... needs to be a series. Oh, my God. Do you think we can get the rights to that? Because I, I don't want to even. No. Like, there's no disrespect to macho in it either. 
It's just like every all. every issue. It's just pretty much him elbow dropping something and saving the day. It's like a exactly. Scooby Doo cartoon. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> just Macho Man tours around. There's problems. He drops an elbow and saves yep. the day. Ah oh, man. Like you see Lee Harvey Oswald up in the window and then it's, <laughs> yeah. and he just an elbow crushes him in the forehead and the convertible drives by. No problem. <laughs> 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 That'd be so great. <laughs> Actually, Kenny still gets shot because you know he was a patsy. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say because of the second shooter, or <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that would be so great, dude. Macho through time. That's all I want to see. Oh now. my god, <laughs> I want to see him elbow drop Hitler. That's better than Captain America kicking Hitler in the ass. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I would gladly take a comic with Macho Man dropping an elbow on Hitler. <laughs> I don't even care if the rest of the issue was just blank pages. <laughs> it's just the cover of him dropping the elbow. It's just like, you know, nothing on the inside. I'd be like, sold. Four dollars, here you go. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'm taking multiple copies. <laughs> oh, God. See, now I wish I had more ambition with Photoshop because we'd be doing a, a macho through time. Would become like our thing. We just, from here on, I just do like a new one each week. I'm writing it down because maybe I'll get the ambition to do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Macho through time. Because you know there's fantastic pictures of him dropping elbows. Oh, you betcha. And you. basically this would become like the Punk's comic book, you know, like where you're just doing the photo collage kind of a thing. <sighs> right. Damn it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, right here's where we... This is what we do. We get with Palicki, and we just get him to do the actual writing, and we just do all the other shenanigans, and we go pitch this because there's no way this doesn't sell. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's just Macho Man's not dead. Right. He's just a time traveler. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> we'll sell it to Marvel. Apparently, they're cool with anything going. Uh Anywho, so back to the funny books. Damn, I kind of want to keep talking about Macho through time, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I, I really want to do this. Like, I'm not even, like, most of the shit we make up and stuff would be like, this would be funny for, like, ten minutes and be like, okay, seriously, I'm tired of white mud. You know? <laughs> I wouldn't get tired of Macho through time because all no. the random shit you could come up with. If it's not a, like an, an elbow drop on nowhere, he just comes running up with a steel chair. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like when you save Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> or better, better yet, it's not actually Kennedy in the car. It's actually Macho Man, and he just <laughs> leaps from the car to the window and elbow drops. <laughs> elbow drops. <laughs> it's Miss Elizabeth next to him. You know? <laughs> ah! Because well, he course. has the ability to leap from anywhere to anywhere. And I don't mean like quantum leap or nightcrawler kind of leap. I mean legitimately but, leap from wherever he wants. But, but Brian, wait. <laughs> what if instead of Sam Beckett, it was Macho Man? <laughs> it would be the greatest show ever. I would watch that TV show forever. Just I'm just, in my head, I'm picturing him doing the. So I'm tr to jump from place to place, or, th or jump through time until I can find my way home. I just yeah, picturing like, until I can find the last jump, <laughs> which is home. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh uh, damn it! I was gonna go dig it. <laughs> 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 oh my god oh god damn it this would be phenomenal oh. <laughs> and Mean Gene could be Ziggy <laughs> or whatever no 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 name was. Ziggy's the handheld whatnot. Ziggy was the computer that's yeah, right yeah yeah um, oh I can't think of his name now damn it Al Al you're right yeah. good call because it was Dean was it Stockwell or Stock? Uh, I can't tell you. But Al is, yep. Good call. Oh, my God. That'd be so great. <gasps> Forget it. It can't be Mean Gene, dude. If we're going to have Macho Man, it's got to be Alfred Hayes. Oh, fair enough. Lord Alfred Hayes, in fairness. Right. And because it's Al. He could just keep calling right. him Al. Oh, God damn it. Until Macho's rivalry of Hogan <sighs> takes over. Yeah. Like, it, like, takes over the madness in his brain because he has the madness. Well, obviously. He just, like, leaps into the proper timeline, 
where you can elbow Hulk Hogan's mom <laughs> in the belly. <laughs> While Hogan's in utero. <laughs> oh, that ain't right. <laughs> Then he can do the the Hulkamania's deadline. <laughs> <laughs> Hulkamania is dead. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, yeah. oh shit! All right, let me run through the rest of these funny books here real quick. Okay, good call. <laughs> uh, Batman Eternal stand, you know, uh, number forty one, same as it's been. It, you know, it's good. It's we're ramping up. We've got uh, what eleven issues left in the run. So, right. um. Grayson number six is a book that I I love this book like Grayson. And I have not read any of it. it. It's uh, uh, Dick Grayson as like he's a spy basically, but he's kind of like he works for the spy group, but at the same time he's like feeding Batman information. So it's kind of like Born Identity, a little bit. Robin. But it's not like Batman is not in every issue, and you know it's not like a heavy reliance on Batman, and and he's not in like really a. A superhero costume. He's just in like gear, you know. Right. Like wrestling gear, you know. <laughs> Going back Perfect. to his flying Grayson days, you know, because it was you know the flying Graysons were the rivals of the uh, the oh god, what were they called? Macho Man's brothers and stuff. Because oh, there was like there was like Lanny Poffo, um, who I believe was the genius. Um, God, I can't remember if they were the the leap. I don't know. I can't remember if it was the flying. Anyway, but whatever. Enough wrestling. <laughs> so Grayson, I gave a four because again, I really like the book. It's been consistently good, and it again, it's not really a superhero book, but it contains a character who is clearly a super, you know from the superhero canon. Um, right. And then the last book I wanted to talk about was Wolverine's number two, which is a weekly uh, book. And it still needs to be, you know, Red Dawn. If it's Wolverine, <laughs> it needs to be Red Dawn. Wolverines. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. They need to be fighting the Russians, not the Koreans. Yeah. Fuck off remake. I know. I know. I'm with you. Aside from the fact that, you know, it put Eric's sister in another movie. Well, that's that. So, hey, keep working. Get your money, girl. Um, yeah. Mm, get that cheddar. It's su- <laughs> oh, not son. <laughs> yeah. Get that cheddar, boo. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Um, I think number two of Wolverines was better than number one. It's still, well, I gave it a three five. It was it was decent, and the art is so much better than it was in the first one, because the art was seriously just like I had talked about it last week. It was just like back backup art. It was just was bleh. So right. that's what I got for the week. I read a few other books, but I haven't read much else. There's only a few other books. Oh, real one last real quick. Copperhead number five came out. That's the end of the first arc. Mm. And the wrap-up was eh. The book's good, but the wrap-up was eh. And, you know, now i got to wait two more months before another one because after the first arc of a book, the standard practice now is you put out the first five issues. The next month, instead of starting the next arc, you put out the trade paperback of the first five issues. And then you put out the month after that is when the next arc starts. Huh. That's the new like schedule new for a lot of the companies. Yeah, I hate it, but I understand it. You know, so, but I hate it. Not saying I do it. Yeah, but I understand. I yeah, exactly. So yeah. All right, that's all I got for gotcha. comics. You got anything to else to toss in or? Uh, not comic book wise. Uh, I do want to welcome a brand new enthusiast to the fold, Brian. Ah, excellent. We have a, a snifter of brandy for him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> this club is more seductive than sex. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's probably where we should use that. The enthusiast. Uh, um, because it's the Lyle? cream of the crop. Oh, sorry, Dan Lyle. Ly- I think that's how I say his name. If He's not, a, correct us on a Twitter. A new Patreon sponsor, kids. Woo! And if you want to be like Dan, go to our webpage, saltylanguage.com. It's got to be the Scroll shoes, Scroll halfway down to the right. Find the sexy microphone with a pair of headphones. Balance on it. It says Patreon. Click on it. Join the fold. Join For as low us. as a dollar a month, you too can sponsor Salty Language. <laughs> Which... Which helps us cover costs for the show, you know, like the the website and server costs and what have you. Again, we're not looking to get rich. I mean, we are, but we're not. We are also smart enough to know we're not, not going not by to. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're, you know, like that. We'd like to upgrade a, l- a couple of things, and 
get some microphones where maybe we can do some uh, on location Maybe kind of thing. Shit. Yeah, or whatever. Since we got some of that kind of working out in our future. Yeah, so you know we got some things we'd like to do. You know, Tony needs to you know renovate the uh, the soon to be crowned new Shameless Plug Studios because it'll be an official like studio versus you know my room. <laughs> And uh, my dining room. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but anywho, like you said, go to saltylanguage.com over on the right hand side. Scroll, scroll, scroll to the microphone and click if and you the, can. And you can cancel and at, at any time. It's true. And at the very least, you dirty fucks. <laughs> if you're not going to become a Patreon <laughs> member, click on the Amazon and do your shopping through us. Yeah. Just help us out a little bit if you can. If you can't, we understand. Money's tight, whatever, but, you know. Exactly. We just don't love you as much. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we'll still love you, just yeah. not as much. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, you know what we almost skipped over here? What's that? Uh, it's time <laughs> to do football picks. Oh, shit, son. <laughs> Snowy fields of whatever we're at. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have a good week last week. Well, we had a good Saturday. Yeah. We're uh, on the, the – for the playoffs, you are 4-4 four and four at this point, and I'm 5-3. and three, Right. Which is not great. It's not, not horrible, but it's not great. So this week we have in the AFC Championship game, we the, oh shit! We had the Indianapolis woo, Colts against the New England Patriots. Well, I already made my Super Bowl pick on. Uh, you did. The enthusiast number three. Yeah. And that's so, the, and and the enthusiast. Well, I did say the enthusiast is kind of like our Vertigo or Elseworlds, so we can wiggle out of that and say, well, that's an alternate timeline, obviously. <laughs> Well, I think Macho <laughs> through time would el- elbow me in the face. <laughs> Damn it. All right, you know what? As much as I love Uncle Tickle, Macho through time has to be the show name, right? <laughs> I mean, it has good. to be. Yeah. It's pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, it's it, Patriots. Sorry, Andrew Luck. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> your luck Take is that, running out. <laughs> exactly. Take that Ugh. horseshoe on the side of your head. It's not working out for you, bro. Oh, I was thinking about the horseshoe on the ed- on the bottom of his face because he's got that weird, like, hobo growth that he calls a beard. <laughs> the, the ho- you know what? I don't is even want to insult hobos that way because they grow. Is it the lack of a mustache? Is it like the Amish thing? Yeah, kind of. But it's just it's not a good beard even. It's that it's the kind of beard that doesn't sit, like, up here. It kind of sits, like, almost under your chin. It's almost like right. a chin strap, you know? But, it's, I mean, it's thicker, but it's just, it's just not good. But he looks like a goofy bastard without it, too, so I don't really know what's going on. He's doomed, Dad. Yeah, he is. What was it? Oh, I, I think he, Billy Burr talked about it this week, actually. I talked about him. How he's like he went to Stanford, and he's like super smart and all this, and he's a quarterback, but he looks like a guy who's just some yokel. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. All oh, right. Well, so you're, what we're both saying, Brian, Yeah. is that this guy with his dumbass neck beard and stupid horseshoe inside a hat. Yeah. Is just I don't I don't think he's going to stand up against the stunning good looks of Tom Brady. Well, he can't stand up because, you know, when when a, a horse's leg gets broken, you just take him out back and put him down, and that's what it's the true. Patriots are going to be known for again this week. Oh, it's going to be a musket ball to the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's for his own good. When, you know, a horse breaks its leg, I mean, you know. It's true. Uh yeah, I think we're both calling calling the Patriots on this. What score do you got? Uh, I'm gonna go. It's it's it is gonna be a good game though. I think so too. I'm gonna go Patriots twenty seven. Yeah, Colts twenty one. All right, I've got Colts twenty four, Patriots thirty. Yeah, right on. I, it may, I don't. We'll see. Because the Colts have you know they're playing better ball right now. I mean they're definitely heating up as. The playoffs have gone on. They've been playing better, but right, yeah. Tom Brady and those guys. I mean, again, last week they were down by fourteen twice, and yeah. they won the football game because you gave Tom Brady the ball back with time to go. <laughs> you yeah, know, exactly. He's like, "Oh, I got shit to do now, guys." Yeah, and as good as the Ravens were, and and the Ravens always play him tough. You know, just wasn't wasn't enough. All right, and the second game, we've got the guys who normally play on the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. 
Right. My hated, hated rivals, the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Ugh, we all hate the Green Bay Packers. Unless coming you're a Packers fan, you hate the Packers. Coming off that delightful victory via crazy call against the Cowboys. <laughs> right. I'm not even kidding. I, you know, whatever. One thing I will say real quick about that whole thing, Bill Burr, like, ranted on that for, like, the first half of his podcast. Yes. As a Lions fan, and forget the week before, this has zero to do with that. As a Lions fan, there was a game where Calvin Johnson caught a football in the end zone, took two steps, hit his ass on the f- ground, but then he, like, put the ball down as he went to get back up, and it was called a no catch. Because he didn't complete the process. Right, because he put the ball on the ground without, like, his arm or hand underneath it. It's the one of the dumbest rules. The rule needs to be changed. For sure. And looking at the Des Bryant catch, it's the same thing. Des Bryant clearly had that ball. He falls to the ground, and then the ball comes out. That right. should have been a catch, but by the current rules, that's not a catch because the Kelvin Johnson ball wasn't a catch, and they didn't change the rules since then. It's not a catch. Sorry, right. quit whining, Cowboys fans. At least you didn't get beat by an, a legitimate bad call. Now, having said that, we have Green <laughs> Bay at Seattle. <laughs> Um, dude. This I think this game could be really good, or Seattle's just going to crush them. I don't know which. I, I think it'd be really good if Aaron Rodgers didn't fuck his leg up. Yeah, I think that's going to be a problem because everybody on the Seahawks' defense is fast. Yeah, and they're all going to be foaming at the mouth. <laughs> right, and they have an extra guy, as we've pointed out before. Yeah, they exactly. have the 12th man blitzing. That's just yeah, not even an- fair. Angels in the end zone or oh, whatever. God. You got an angel with you right now. He's, yeah, it, his, you, his jacked Glover. up leg, he's going to be slow moving around. Yeah. The Seahawks are going to be like, Rah! swooping in and doing <laughs> Seahawk things. Right. And the Seahawks are yeah. great against the run, which the Packers have been using, you know, doing pretty well. I just. I just don't see yeah. how he, he's going to have to discount, double check himself before he riggedy wrecks <laughs> himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is all—all all this. <laughs> having said all of this, it's—it's it's all because I just believe this much in Seattle, not because I hate Green Bay this much. Even though I no, do, I, I absolutely yeah, I hate. Hear I loathe Green Bay, but oh, same here. But yeah, I, I think if Aaron Rodgers was healthy, it might be a slightly different story. Yeah, but I, I just uh, yeah, I'm not. I don't. I'm not feeling it. I mean, I know Mar- fans. Marshawn Lynch is a little banged up, and that's a big part of what they do in Seattle, but that defense is so good. Yeah. I just, I feel like in ways, I feel like it's like the Ravens team from, when was that, 2000, was that 2003 or six or something like that, when that defense was just ridiculous, you know? I kind of feel like we're looking at that again. Right. So, all right, what do we got here? I'm going to say Seattle. (sighs) Boy, I don't know. I'm going to say I'm going to say 27 for Seattle. I'm going to say 17 for the Packers. Fair enough. I think it's going to be a, a beaten. Now, again, I haven't even looked at the, the I, spread. Yeah, I haven't looked at any of the lines you know, either. I didn't think about it because before I didn't do it because we were picking so far in advance on some of them that you, there were no lines for, like, the games. I wasn't right. thinking about we could have pulled the lines up on these games. Ah, I like just – Fucking balls to the wind. <laughs> you know? Hanging them out there for everybody, huh? Exactly. All right, all right. I'm going uh I'm going Seahawks twenty eight. Packers fourteen. Oh shit, my hat. They're gonna double down on their asses. Nice. So having said that <laughs> Which of these Seahawks? games because we generally don't get them both right. Right. Which of these games do you think we're more likely to be wrong on? Indian New in New England, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I just don't see the Seahawks going any. I don't. Yeah, I don't see that game going any other way. Right. I just don't see their like, offense. Indian being New that, England is kind of like iffy because because Andrew Luck could throw six touchdown passes any yeah, given game. Know. He's he's like he, a Peyton Manning like that. He could dude, just he could summon the inner Beelzebub of his <laughs> neck beard and like harness some sort of crazy now, football magic. I have to ask you a question: Does he have a hell cape? That might be. Yeah, that's might what's be in the on form his chin. Neck beard right <laughs> nice. Yeah. Fair it's, enough. It's like it's like a hell handkerchief. Okay. So having said that, clearly our. Well, this is your bet. I don't want to take that away from you. Well, gee, I mean, so, Jesus, for the love of God, Seahawks. <laughs> Lock of the week. 
<laughs> I love that so much. I don't know why, but I do. It just reminds me of being a little kid when they always used to do the dumb sound effects with the stuff, you know? Yeah, for Even sure. Even on TV, like not just radio. I mean, the, it, the Seahawks. More seductive than sex. <laughs> they kind of are. It's true. They really are. It's tough to pick against them. It yeah. really is. <laughs> I the Seahawks. <laughs> Cream of the crop. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to keep saying the Seahawks just to see if you're going to keep using those or if you're going to switch to other things. And uh, the Seahawks. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm running out. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! All right, Lawrence well- Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, real quick here. Oh wait, the sea. No, you got more. <laughs> I go. I got to turn this down. It's gonna be loud. Right. The Seahawks. <laughs> Pulp Fiction rape scene. <laughs> it's terrible. Terrible. Hilarious. Terrible. Oh jeez, look what they're doing to the Packers. Oh, not that's even. No good. Oh, that's just foul. <laughs> okay, so bad. real quick, I had the lines <laughs> on the games here. Real quick. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and they seem to be pretty similar. Actually, both games seem to be pretty similar, which is interesting. Um, The Green Bay at Seattle, it looks like um, Seattle, clearly Seattle's the favorite. So uh, it's Green Bay plus 7.5, or Seattle negative 7.5, depending on how you want to look at the the score there. Do you think Seattle is going to win that game by 8 points? I, I think mean, we both do, right? Game by eight points. Yeah. And the India at New England game, it uh, looks like six and a half either way for most of it. Six and a half or seven, depending on which of these places you look through. That is going to be closer, I think. There's, I mean, I've got it set at, I've got it set at six, and so do you. So at that point, we would have to take um, Indianapolis if we were betting on the line. Right. But uh, that's... That one's one that it wouldn't shock me if that game comes down to a field goal. It it's, seriously wasn't or wouldn't. And something you know, if it comes down to a field goal, the Colts have Adam Vinatieri on that team. It's true, <sighs> but I don't think all, he's going to get the chance. All, all we're really saying right now, Brian, yeah, is empty your bank accounts <laughs> into put the Patreon. Seventy percent of it on the Patreon. It's all the language right now. <laughs> right. The other thirty percent. Seahawks. Oh, I was going to say the other 30% go to Amazon after going to oh. SaltyLanguage.com. <laughs> okay. The other 29% <laughs> Amazon shopping. The 1% Seahawks. <laughs> Lock of the week. Oh, shit. All right. Well, uh, we've already told you plenty of times where to go for uh, you know all the things related to the show. Uh, saltylanguage.com. You can get past episodes on there that you can't get on iTunes or anywhere else, you know, in case for some reason you haven't listened to all the back catalog. Uh, oh, we hate you. Make sure you Actually, check out Make sure you check out the enthusiasts that just went up. And, well, all the enthusiast episodes, actually, because they're all yeah, there's there. There's only three of them, you fucks. It's in the same What, are you feed. lazy or something? It's, if you, you know, and you should be subscribing to the show anyway because it helps us out because it helps you know in the iTunes rankings and whatnot. It allows us to maybe get more listeners. So if you yeah, haven't sub- us up. if you use the iTunes and you haven't subscribed, you know, please take a second out and do that for us. And while you're there, please also... Uh, you know, leave us a five star rating because we are clearly, as Macho Man would say, the he, cream of the crop. Oh, that's not the one I wanted, but all right. More seductive than sex. That and and I'll tell you what: if you leave a review that calls us more seductive than sex, I will shout you out on the on pre or you know uh, episodes coming up. Oh yeah! <laughs> so yeah, there Macho's you go. excited. He is, but you got to make sure that you let us know via uh, the Twitter, which is at salty underscore language. I'm at tsunami. I am at monotony. And uh, yeah, so let us know if you do that. We'll give you the old shout out. And on that note, I think we've reached the point of the show where uh, it's time to say one thing. Uh, making your way in the world today takes everything you got. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I can't pull the next line. Shit. 
Something, 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 something. Ah, I don't remember either. Damn it. Something, all your worries. Sure, sure would help, would help a lot. Help yeah. a lot. I can't, damn it. I'm, I'm really mad I can't remember that. Anyway, yeah. what are we? Seven Days a Geek? We're not going to be pulling TV show theme songs here. We'll let That's Jason true. do that. That seems to be his thing. Uh, check Fair out enough. the other shows on the networks we're part of, such as Seven Days a Geek over at uh, podgodsnetwork.com. Uh, check us out on musingsofageek.com. Or Tangent Bound Network, bitches. Dot com, without the bitches. Uh, <laughs> we're also on the directory on geekliferadio.com. Um, See, so yeah, I think that's it, right? I, I don't think we got anything else. All right, well, it feels right. I'm spent. Oh, I bet you are. Oh, yeah. So I guess Ooh, yeah. Macho yeah. Man seems to be done. Uh, so have a beer. You'll be fine. Hey, stay salty. And uh, uh, go elbow drop yourself. Nice. Not yourself. Your opposition. You're right. Through time, even, if you have that power, which no one has except Macho Man. So It's true. Macho through time. Yeah. <laughs> Coming soon to SaltyLanguage.com. <laughs> this needs to happen. It really does. We, we need to work on this. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll see you next time. Again, check out The Enthusiast and other shows on our networks and what have you. Perfect use for the Salty Language Instagram. This is actually true. Good call. Yeah. Follow us on there at Salty Language. Are we still recording? Yeah. Yeah, we are. God damn it. We're not anymore, though, because we out. You are now leading the world of Musings of a Geek Podcast Network. Stay geeky, my friends.